Welcome back to Numbers on the Board. Numbers on the Board! Yes! We here, we here, we here. We got a full, jam-packed episode for the people at home. Be sure to leave a like, subscribe to the channel. How we feeling today? Only thing I gotta say, KB, is that like, I be feeling ways towards things Mm -hmm. because every time they need me for a boost, I never hesitated. Okay. Every time when Yeezy called the truth, he had my head inflated. It's just like, mm. you know, I, I actually do right and killed everything. People knew that death awaited. That's Taylor t- Swift, the only that I ever rated. The only one can make me drop the album just a little later. The rest of y'all, I treat you like you never made it. Oh. Leave your label devastated. Hey. Even when you pad the stacks. Uh, what? It, even when you pad the stacks. I forgot what else he said right after that. But Even when you stabbed me in the back. The Vest's metal played it. You it, it ding, 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 ding. That's how I'm feeling, though. <laughs> but let me tell you about my brother, though. <laughs> he better get into the hole. Yeah, I was about to Hold say the luck. <laughs> <laughs> How much more we got? You know, how, you know how amazed I was when I first heard that do right and kill everything, and I put that together, and it was like the Drake. It was a you long ass. I was going to say, yeah, was you 12? You, no, you bogus as hell. Right. What was that to put together? He told you. It's Drake, Drake, Drake stand for do right and kill. I mean, I didn't know until he said it. So there was nothing to put together because no, he put it together for you. No, didn't know until he he what? had never he never said that before. That's not he's he he probably came up with that too. When I first heard that line, I'm like, that's raw as hell. Everybody I mean, probably did. Yeah, it was a raw line. I'm just going off you saying you put it together. That's yeah, like really when Wayne said, "I yeah. leave him dead in the living room." <laughs> <laughs> Get it? He made sure he put it together for you. He he wrote that line. It was like it there's no of, it way. Took there's no interpretation. To, it took me a couple of listens to get that part. Yeah. The Drake or the living room? <laughs> I was just joking about the living room because he literally tells you. Drake does too. Yeah, there's no interpretation yeah. there. But nobody tells you like Lil Wayne when he says, get it, lit- get it, I leave him dead in the living room. I don't know. Drake says, but Drake, Drake said, stands yeah. for do right. Do right. <laughs> and the A in his name is for and. I, I get it. I get it. Uh, <laughs> but Wayne, the Wayne definitely do got to do the get it sometime because I've definitely had the lines go in my head for years. Yeah, yeah. Uh, drop the mic for today. Uh, comes back to the Celtics team. What's the chances you can see them beating that KD Warriors team? Uh, none. I wouldn't that, say there's none. A, there's a chance. I wouldn't for say sure. none. None. I'm definitely the Warriors are the favorite, but I I can't say it's not a chance, man. Okay, they have a two percent chance. They they're they they like. That Kate, I, I I don't know. Sometimes in these conversations, I think we forget because it's so many years removed. Mm-hmm. Steph Curry, Kevin Durant, and Klay Thompson were on the floor together on the same team in their prime. Run you, in their you, prime. You forgot about the one guy, Draymond. Yeah, but I, the reason I highlight them because they, I was about to talk about the shooter. But yeah, even Draymond Green mm-hmm. on the same floor in an offense that they all. You know how we talk about Dame and Yana? Oh man, some they don't. We want to see them play together, play off each other. They did that. With four guys, and three of them are arguably some of the greatest, not just three-point shooters, but shooters in the history and score ever. It's the greatest constructed roster ever. Um, and then Sean, so Livingston, no, Sean Livingston coming off that bench. Yeah, we ain't even got to talk about that bench. <laughs> Andre Iguodala we didn't mention. Um, so it's no slight at the Boston Celtics. I love their team, and it is good for this league right now. But I just think that that Warriors team is so – like when James Harden says Steph don't count, I feel that way about that team when we talk about history. Like, <laughs> yeah. they don't really count, man. They're like stati- statistical outliers on everything. I would probably go 90-10. Yeah, it would be probably be around there. It would be, you know what? <laughs> I, I'm not mad. I'm not mad at the, like, the small percentage. I'm just I'm, – I'm glad to hear that they do have a little percent because there's, like, a part of me that thinks, like, probably not they – they can make it interesting the way that they play ball. They could defend basically yeah, every the position. they few people, teams in history that – Position by position, have like above what average, it takes yeah. defensively to to hang at least. And then point wise, they could put up the points. Yeah, yeah. That's and they don't have a good night. They don't have a guy to like attack either. The, my only thing is, mm-hmm. unless you're talking about Por, unless baby Porzingis down but the stretch. They, yeah, they don't have what the Warriors is going to have. Mm-hmm. Nobody on the Boston Celtics side is going to come close to the, the delivering how Kevin Durant will. But the difference also is the Warriors, the Celtics have a scheme, too. They want to get the threes. But it just doesn't come close to the Warriors because they don't have that personnel. St- who match- who is there? Who is- when you highlight the teams, star power-wise, 
who is matching Steph? Nobody, right? No. Just... Who is matching Kevin Durant? Nobody, right? Mm-hmm. Jason Tatum, you give him the edge over uh, Clay Thompson. Clay That's a that, like yeah. They have the the Warriors have the two best players in the series for sure, and it's not close. Yeah, it's at that time it's not even close. So it's like, and it ain't like, I don't know. We ain't got to worry about the and even when he making them, but we don't have to worry about the predictability of a side step three. <laughs> it does cut <laughs> like the Warriors. Are just, that team was just so unfair, man. So unfair. I'm just happy I didn't hate watch them like I hate watch Braun and Miami. Yeah. I actually enjoyed those years. No, for sure. I, I wasn't rooting for him, obviously, but that yeah. was just such good basketball. I was, that I, I was rooting for Braun. I turned to a Braun fan. Wow. Just because I want to see him beat them. Yeah. That's probably that. when I, around the time I started really rooting for Braun. Too. I became a Braun fan the year before that, before KD got there, when they did have the 3-1 comeback. Oh, when they had the 3-1 comeback? Yeah. Okay. I yeah. became a Braun fan when he lost to the Mavericks. Well, I was a Braun fan. He went to the Heat. I dialed back, felt away. When they lost that first year, I was like, "Oh, I can like him again." Are you only yeah. a hater for three hundred and sixty-five days? Yeah, that's not long enough. Once he went back long, to the Cavs, long that, enough for me. Actually, no. I think my fandom probably came when he went back that first year with the Cavs. I don't. I don't. Just, I'm, I'm just not strictly because he did something that I would have loved to do. And that's go back to your home city <laughs> yeah. and win a championship. Him going back to Chicago, him playing for the Bulls and getting those. Uh, what, what's a ring. The, the equivalent to that in podcasting? Oh, uh, maybe it's like going back to House of Highlights. Probably <laughs> and becoming the number one sports <laughs> oh, yeah. podcast in America. <laughs> yeah, that would probably be no. It. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> when you say that's something I wanted to do, when you're not an athlete, it's just funny. I always wanted to win a championship here in Chicago. When I would be shooting around at Lifetime <laughs> late at night, I would imagine myself putting on that Bulls jersey, being in the UC. Hey, getting the, Pete, that's a real winners, hooper right there, man. Getting hidden game winners Maybe on LeBron. Maybe ain't had them you thoughts. Know? When you young, KB he shouldn't have waited. I'm glad he did. KB was the first overall pick when he was 12 years old oh, in okay. the KBA draft Don't sleep. I know a lot of people who don't who not own the shit right now. Because they had, they held on to them thoughts a little too long. So props yeah. to don't they're not gonna shit on my cousin because he was he he understood and moved on. I, with his I, life. Sh- that's I just, shifted that's, to this. Yeah, no, early on, brother. Thing, as a kid, it's okay to really kind of like think like that. No, but as you get no, older, I said I still know people now. We not <laughs> we, we, <laughs> long time. Since I know, we I know people like that. Right, too. okay, yeah. So at at the su- Derek, your ass should have let them shots go a while ago, brother. <laughs> I could have told you. Part of your dream did come true. You did shoot around <laughs> at the UC. I did. And we were doing that buzzer beater thing where he was like, oh, snap, magically five more seconds put on the clock when you were doing that three-point competition. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> six, could, could he was going to be a six full power four hit that shot for the Bulls. Hell, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love it, man. Dream big, man. All y'all kids dream. We just talking shit to each other. But Mike is right. When you're a kid, you are supposed to. But I don't want y'all to be 24 having doing the same dream you did when you was eight. <laughs> Talking about you got one more year el- eligibility. <laughs> <laughs> them, them CDLs can make you a lot of money, man. Yes, yes, yes. Go get, go get you one of them trucks. Matter of fact, we gonna start us. We gonna start us a business. We gonna hire some of y'all. We <laughs> want y'all to move them things across state lines. Um, by the way, I'm proud of you. What's up? Just a quick second, cause we know unplugged. We are gonna do a lot of chit chatting. You have taken major. I'm gonna say it again. You taking major strides as a 2K guy. Like the CEO development up close and personal is kind of crazy. You, we went from you being a liability to now I feel like you shoot too much. <laughs> well, let me not say shoot too much, but your shots you take out wild. But I just wanted to give you some love on that. Um, we'll be starting with this NBA talk. I feel like I haven't talked to y'all about NBA for a while because we just sat with each other for four hours and very rarely did basketball come up, which was kind of crazy. I kind of want to talk about the Warriors to start off with. Let's talk about the Warriors. Um, Because they're on a two-game losing streak. Last night, they blew a 18-point lead to the Nets. 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 And the game before that, they blew a lead to the Spurs. I forget. It was a double-digit lead. I forget what it was exactly. Um, Buddy Hill has come back down to earth. He's now averaging 12 points per game on 30-something percent shooting from three since November 8th. And it's, you know, come back down to earth. And it's making me wonder that when December 15th opened up, who they should be targeting. Yeah, me and my dad literally last night was on the phone saying that. It's got to be something. You you can't be complacent. You can't think that this is this team is good enough. This is not the same Warriors from what? Was that 2022 where they yeah. won the championship? How you feel about Zach Levine? I love Zach Levine for them. I just don't think they can because Wiggins has been so great and Wiggins has to be in a trade. He does. Yeah, and I think 
them and the Lakers are both teams who are probably going to be aggressive. Forget, forget the Lakers right now. Let me no, ask no. Let me <laughs> ask, I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm let joking. me ask y'all this question because this always confuses me. The Anthony Melton is out for the rest of the year. Yep. He can he or can he not still be traded? He can. He can. Yeah. The other team just has to One. completely okay. agree. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So, so you still have that twelve million dollars salary on the last year of his deal. Mm-hmm. Um, My question mostly was around Jonathan Kaminga, because I think that his his value in NBA talk is just widely different. Like some people think that he can be the main centerpiece to a Jimmy Butler trade. Some people think that the trade that eventually gets Jonathan Kaminga out the door is not going to be for the superstar player that a lot of people think. Where are y'all head at? Because the team that's traded for him, A, has to pay him, and y'all know he want that big-ass bag, and he turned down a lot of money to try to get that max. It ain't looking great. And I'm assuming if you're trading him to a team, he's probably going to put up good enough stats to maybe make you think that he's worth that much money. Yeah. So what do y'all think about him as a trade asset? I mean, I think it depends. Like, if I'm the Miami Heat, me trading for John Kaminga in a way is me kind of resetting, and do I look at him as a key piece to my future? I don't think Kaminga has shown me much to where I think he's a big piece to a future team. I think he could be a nice quality And we're just talking player. heat and hypothetical. They got their shit together recently, so maybe yeah, they're so not even thinking of it. If I'm the heat, I'm probably not going to look at him as a much of a value mm-hmm. asset to me when I'm looking to compete. Um, but on the flip side, if I'm like a younger team, like let's say the Hornets want to bring in Kaminga and have him develop with the young guys, yeah, I would have, do that. Yeah, for yeah. sure. I think he's more of a, at this point, he's more of a connecting piece or a connecting young piece. He's shown you flashes, but I don't think it's enough to where it's like, this is probably my number one or number two guy right here that I'm bringing in. So I, I would definitely pay, like, be in the middle. I don't think he's nowhere where you're just gonna, not going to, like, when you trade him away, you're bringing in something, like, that's probably not moving anything for this team. Like, you're going to get something decent in return. Like, he's a very decent young player. He can play, like, he can defend. Obviously, we've seen some of the offensive, but like the only thing really thing is, or the only thing kind of holding back is probably, I feel like the shooting and like playmaking, which has got to develop more. But I like the other chops that he has. It's just I'm not willing to think that he's going to come in and eventually be my number two to number one guy. The question, to answer the question, I have to throw a question back at you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so I'm gonna throw it, at, throw it back at you. I like that. What team? has something the Warriors want that won't won't want to compete again. I think the Heat are just, and I know we just use them as an example because mm-hmm. of Jimmy Butler, but I'm asking you all to help me think of teams off the it top. Would, it would be like Cam Johnson. Cam Johnson's $23 million. You get there with Jonathan Kaminga. You get there with DeAnthony, DeAnthony Melton. And I don't know. That That's what makes it difficult because Kevon Looney feels like a for-lifer. Mm-hmm. Kyle Anderson is just one of their newly acqui- acquired pieces. But you could get there, basically, what I'm saying. Yeah. Um, and I think the Nets would probably be interested in that. That's the t- that's the type of team that I think would be interested, too. But that's also the type of team, if I'm Mike Dunleavy and Jr. and the Warriors, where that's just not – I might as well keep them. Right. That's what I'm saying. Like, this, his trade value varies so differently because Cam Johnson, objectively, is having a really, really good season, even though he twisted his ankle last night. Um but is that enough for the Warriors to be like, yeah, no. we're trading away Kaminga? Is that going to change our ceiling that much? Like, of course, it's going to help. But does that put us into contention with OKC or in contention with some of the other teams out west? Probably not. No. Yeah. If I see that deal on my timeline right now, I'm going to be excited because we got a trade. But I don't look at the Warriors objectively taking any major stride. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, and unfortunately, it's like Jimmy Butler is probably like the only like star or like star level player that's available. So, like, realistically, no one's available. So there's no, like, big home run hitters out there that they can go and pursue. You just have to hope by the deadline maybe someone becomes disgruntled for whatever reason. The other part that makes it extremely tricky is is that Jonathan Kaminga is still on his rookie deal. Yeah. So, like, even if you did have a Jimmy Butler, how do you make $50 million work? Yeah. Yeah. And you have to throw your... Your second, your third most important player, Wiggins, Which in there. Wiggins. Mel- Melton has to be in there. It would have to be Kaminga, and it would probably have to be Kevon Looney. That makes the money match. We talking about four bodies. For I one person, I, I, I couldn't do not, it. It might not even be for I, one I person, know it's but better. it's still like four. When, whenever you do those four, like that shit, and ain't, ain't nobody just trying to win a championship. Seriously, and, and we could take one away because DeAnthony Melton is not even playing. But like that's still, it's a lot. I mean, that's only, a lot. 
who was the team that's done? Like, only LeBron teams have done that, right? Where it's like, we're trying to win a championship and we'll trade seven people. But that's because we know we have LeBron James that's right. probably going to carry them at least Any to the other finals. championship caliber team, they're going to do deals here and there. They're not doing one trade where they're taking four of their bodies, whether they've been, high, whether, no matter how important they are, but you're taking four bodies out of the locker room and you're going to go and bring in three new ones, a seven-person deal in the middle of the season for a contending team. Especially um, with a team that... As a system. A system. Like the Warriors where guys have to come in and learn that. Not impossible because I know people yeah. were definitely going to try to go and fact check and Google all these trades. Not impossible to happen, but in my mind, it's not something that we consistently seen for a reason. And like you mentioned, the system. That's one of the things where it's also hard for me to value Jonathan Kaminga um, is because they have a system there. Um, they have staples there. And we haven't seen him be prioritized like a lot of his – competition has or when I or peers I will say instead of competition because I think if Jonathan Kaminga was on the Detroit Pistons I'm not saying he would be Kay Cunningham but I think we look at him a lot differently than what we view Jonathan Kaminga is right now um but then that goes back to the argument is like a lot of young players can probably put up gaudy stats on bad teams but does he turn into a player that you're building around and I think that's just a question we all don't know the answer to and why him and his team either are telling the Warriors we want money. We know you're not going to pay pay us, and or you could just trade us. So let's move off of that. So let's say, boom, we we came to the conclusion that a star player is not available. What are some other things that they could use? Because when I watched them, and this has always been the Warriors' case, but because they were so talented, it just didn't matter as much. They're Size. so fucking small, man. Mm -hmm. And they're, they're third in the league and giving up offensive rebounds only behind OKC, who was running no center for like three weeks, and then the Washington mm -hmm. Wizards. So now I'm trying to figure out, okay, can the – Melton contract help us just get more size in the room, and even that is somewhat difficult. Um, only center I could think Could you try to get Yakov? What about Valanciunas? All three of those dudes are probably available. <laughs> All three. No, of them. What did Mike say? Yakov. Um, Yakov Oh yeah, Yakov Vooch. The only yeah, thing I think sense. about with Yakov is um, how, how much money does Yakov Pertle? It's like 19, 20, 20, 20, 19, It's around 20. the same amount. Valanciunas is ten. Yep. Yeah. DeAnthony Melton twelve. Asset. We get that done very quick. And then yeah. Wizards, y'all wash your hands. You don't have no attachment mm -hmm. outside of that and then three months. Melton is what an uh, expiring deal, right? That's what I'm saying. So, yeah. You wipe your hands. Yeah. I'm That's the big reason it. why they acquired Val, so they're going to trade him. He was always signed as a Val. I'm not mad at Val either, either KB. Thing. It's just that historically, the centers that they want are rim running. JaVale McGee's. Mm -hmm. Derek Lively. Mm -hmm. not Val and Chunas, I don't know. I probably watch a little bit more Wizards games than y'all have. I, I'm guessing because it's the Wizards. When Valanciunas come in the game, they play through him. <laughs> he yeah. he's getting the That's ball and they're see, curling and hand like I could see them. Uh, yeah, you're right because they do want their rim running, but I. I feel like they do like a, a center that's willing to like make some plays and make some passes. That's why I do kind of like Yakim for him because he he could do a little bit of the rim running, but he can also make the right plays. No, he's and, perfect. And finish. He's probably yeah. the best fit he's out perfect. of the three. Because yeah. sure. oh, Val yeah, doesn't sure. feel like a closer for them ever. No, he Hell just no. won't close the games. No, um, Vooch has the opportunity to, and they have the defensive infrastructure to kind of not mm -hmm. hide the seven footer, but make it easier for him. But Yakim kind of has defensive chops, good hands, good roller, good playmaker. He kind of is perfect for for them. I it's just that nineteen million. The nineteen million is you have to ask yourself this: twelve comes from DeAnthony. DeAnthony. If the Raptors would do a trade like that, they want something back. Is this now the time when you're comfortable moving away from a? I'm just throwing his name out there because Moses, the, Moody. Moses Moody. He had a great game last night. What too. A, yeah, he did. Uh, Fifteen points in the first half, one missed shot. Um, but. I'm not saying the Raptors want him because they have Grady Dick. Mm -hmm. They have Jacoby Walter. Who Shout out to the Raptors, though. They are, like, tanking, but in the best uh, possible yeah, the way. Best. They crazy. really are. I they, haven't seen they, a tank job doing. like they sucking, but they sucking good. <laughs> <laughs> Every game is, like, down to the wire. Here's a game winner here. Here's us. With and without Scotty Barnes, they were doing yeah. it. Yeah, and Scotty was a shooter last night. I don't know, man. I'm, I'm, Keep I'm the glasses, them. huh? I'm enjoying watching the him play right now. Uh, but I don't know. I just think the Warriors are in an interesting spot. Steph Curry said that he trusts Mike Dunleavy to do whatever it takes, and um, he's ready to compete again. So I like that because we, before, like last season, we really didn't see Steph Curry put pressure on the front office ever. So now he's trying to do it. I don't know exactly what that means or if they'll be able to get a star, but I would be super surprised if February's deadline happened and they didn't do anything significant. Yeah. Has I would, to do, too. Have to do something. They got too many bodies. 12-man rotation is cool in the regular season. 
You don't need 12 men when it comes to the beginning of I think the beginning of the regular season. I think when we get to March, you got um, damn you got to have your rotation down. You 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 got to cut that out. You got to cut that out. Because I mean, it's just realistically you have to start to prepare for the playoffs at some point. And again, the 12 man is not a real playoff mm-hmm. thing. I'm sorry. Yeah. It, but if if anybody was to make it work, it would be them. Yeah. It would be them. But now I think it because more people are coming down, like Buddy Hill coming down to earth mm-hmm. and some of those other shooters not shooting as hot, it's going to be a lot easier to shorten that rotation for sure. At one point, everybody was playing so well that it was like, I can't take his minutes away. <laughs> <laughs> now if he missing. Buddy Hill was taking people off the dribble. Bro, he was perfect for a month. <laughs> he was taking people off the dribble. Yeah, he was looking like six men of the year. Yeah. Uh, uh. That's Buddy Hill, though. Yeah, that's that's the whole experience of Buddy. Um, okay, next team I want to talk about is, or I guess the play in oh, never mind. for the Eastern Conference. Because we talked about it before the season started that there was going to be one or two of the bad teams that have to just make it. And the question was who was going to be. Right now, we have the Indiana Pacers as a seven seed, the Brooklyn Nets as an eight seed, the Detroit Pistons as a nine, and the Bulls at 10. Then we got Atlanta, Charlotte, Toronto. Philly, who still can't get their shit together, and Washington. Uh, who who are the four teams of that list? Do y'all feel comfortable enough to say they're seven through ten? Philly, um, just because I think at some point they're you, you get have their shit you together. just have you're to rattle off five. Yeah, yeah, you have yeah. you have to just mention them. You have to. There's just no, I just don't see them staying at 14th in the. That's for sure. I'm that with shit you. would be. Cr- do you know how crazy that would be to go from a team? Do that they own a pick? Cra- it's top four protected. To go from For looking who? like the who, but if who it falls to six, who you think? The Thunder. <laughs> <laughs> how does how does the Thunder have Philly pick? I don't know. I don't know. It's That's no, so bro, crazy. Do how not picks tell work. me it's the fucking Jeremy Grant trade. I'm I'm looking. Remember up. Jeremy Grant was a sixer. Oh, yes. Got traded to the Thunder. That's oh. the oh my gosh, bro. That's so crazy. That was so trade. long ago though, wasn't it? That's crazy. Was, how picks, that's, that's how picks. That's how the yeah. picks be working. In 2029, we're gonna be like. That's so long ago. <laughs> That's how um the Boston Celtics ended up getting Tatum, right? But Jeremy Grant wasn't yeah. a first round worthy player back then either. So I maybe that's not the trade. But that's the only trade, recent trade that come to my mind is to think of those two teams. It's it's shared between OKC, Houston, and the Clippers. Oh, it's a bunch oh, of teams that have so a So that teams. make a lot of sense. Yeah. Because the James Harden, I don't know. I don't know. Picks are so crazy. And then that pick just seems like it has a lot going on. It's, it's one through six protectors, so they got a little bit more wiggle room. Okay. But imagine that. Imagine if they got. Imagine if they did stay at fourteen and they got the first overall pick or second overall pick, and now the Thunder just. And remember yeah. what I told y'all yesterday. I heard somebody say this could arguably be the. <laughs> <laughs> I heard somebody say this could be the greatest draft class ever. Dang. He mentioned eighty four, ninety six. He stood on ever. Oh three. Don't ask me my opinion. I'm just telling you. Would you rather saying. have that or the weakest draft class of all time? Would I rather have what? One of the best draft classes of all time or one of the weak, hypothetically, one of the best draft classes or. What's the weakest are, draft of all time? It was supposed <laughs> to be this one. <laughs> yeah, it was to, the way people was talking one. about it. But really, it's 2000. Yeah. Jamal McGlure and them. What's that? Oh, uh, is that Keenan Martin? I don't know. I just know Jamal no, McGlure is one Martin. of the three all-stars from that draft class. Or another, is that his Kenyon Martin? I don't know. Go be. ahead, though. I would say the Pistons, too, I would think can make the play-in. They they actually play like a real basketball team. Um, and they even pick up wins with uh, Kate Cunningham out. So I think that's a, a step in the right direction for them. But they they got a lot. Even when Jalen Duran's not on his stuff, they have Isaiah Stewart who they, they could sub in to close out games. Malik Beasley's been really good for them. So I, I would think they have like – and they also want to win games too. Some of these other teams, they're looking like eventually they're probably gonna like start losing. Mm-hmm. I can see the Pistons keeping it up. I'm surprised y'all went to those two teams first. What the mm-hmm. Sixers and the Pistons? Yeah. Why? Because the Pacers are still the Pacers. Oh no, they yeah. were gonna be my other team, the Pacers. And then I also think the Nets. If I was, but I think the Nets have to tear it down, they bro. Have to. If you they're a the playing team, pick? I think it's a disservice to their fan base. But they already but their way of tearing it down is trading. Right. Because right. those dudes, they're going to come out of hoop. Oh, drop. for sure. That's yeah. What saying, <laughs> yeah. But they've already given us that writing on the wall. Yeah. It just showed, hey, Jordy's a good coach once he got good talent. Now let's take a step back. Let's go get Ace <laughs> Bailey or some shit. They've already prepared us to know that Cam Thomas probably can, will be traded and can be traded. They're already letting us know. Well, we already know Cam Johnson is available. Dorian Finney-Smith, Dennis Schroeder. Hell, 
They basically said everybody. They Nicholas Claxton, Claxton can too. go to yeah. at the right price. Yeah. I mean, everybody. I saw the Bucks were tied to Cam Thomas and Dorian Finney-Smith. They're trying to get both of them. But, like, mm-hmm. they really Hey, they I promise can't. you, it they, won't happen. I, you know, I, I saw that, and with the fans, I was like, <laughs> how can I do this? You can't aggregate contracts. You can't. So, like, there's no – and yeah. they don't have the money. And they don't have picks. Yeah. And, no, they don't – yeah, that's the thing. Yeah. <laughs> so, like, they literally can't get either one of those players. Pipe dreams, baby. Pipe dreams. Um, Atlanta's also a sneaky team right here. I know they're on a little skid right now, but they stink. They man. could probably get it I, going. Hey man, I don't, I want to talk about some of the like a player on their team a little bit later for one of our conversations. But yeah, I f- I feel like they're really going into a year where they're kind of just developing other players besides Trey Young. So, like, it's, but every team in that room right now is just is the same as them. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, I see. Because if Charlotte, we say they suck. The Pistons suck. Oh well, <laughs> every it's like it's like changing trajectories though. Every team you in the Ram is gonna suck a little bit. Like Pistons sucking right now is good. Yeah, because they've been so so bad for so long. This is a positive story. Atlanta sucking is like they went from conference finals. No, I understand. <laughs> well, no, nah, I'm not. I wouldn't even no, go back yeah, that but it's far. just like it's been down here from then. I, I understand that sentiment, but I'm just saying if we keep it to where was just what it is, which is the play in. I mean, all these teams are bad. That's what we just taking it as. Yeah. yeah. The Hawks have just as much chance, even though they suck, mm-hmm. as the Pistons because the Pistons suck too. No, yeah, but I get it. One in of five the teams, years, you know, like, no, they're one of the teams too that probably going to make the play in just because you got to count some of the odd teams out. That's going to probably just bottom out. But I they're one of the teams that may. I just don't think they're really. They also don't have their own first round pick this year, so, so it's like there's no incentive yeah. to be bad. Um, who don't the Pistons? They have Atlanta, Atlanta Hawks. Hawks. Yeah. This, you know, Spurs. Yeah. yeah. Um, I I trust the Pacers. Mm-hmm. As long as they keep playing at home. Yeah, Tyrese Halliburton, just a dog at all. <laughs> On the road, he just can't, he just can't get it together. Um, Them airplanes, man. Um, I trust the Hawks and the Pacers. But I do like the Pistons. The Pistons have something about them that they compete. I do like, love the fact that they in so many close games already in the first 15 games Jay of the Knight season. Jay that game winner last So night. happy to see see that for him. Uh, I think a lot of young players be needing those moments. That, that possession was, was so ugly. Thank it was. God it, went it, can, it was so, it was like, I still, that's a shot that if we do that play five times, he misses the next four. Yeah. It was actually, just, I actually was confused on the last play. I was like, wait, why are they send a screen to get Oshie Abaji on him? Mm. He's actually a very good wing defender. You probably rather have him than. It was Davion Mitchell. That's night off. Off night. Uh, off night. Like, yeah. I think R.J. Bear said it wrong in the interview. No, nah, like, yeah, because that's definitely the wrong way. Because you don't get no night off when he on the court. You get an off night. The off night. Off night. Yeah. <laughs> but um, he he made it. That's all that yeah, matters. That's all that matters. They got the win. But and the Sar Thompson came back, which is cool. The Hornets he had though. A three. Intriguing, man, because Lamelo Ball is damn near the best uh, uh, point guard in the East right now. <laughs> yeah. So it's like. <laughs> And I, I really like Brandon Miller, too. If like, I'm being biased, I want them to make the play. I, I do, too. If I'm being biased. That Grant oh, yeah, Williams that injury hurts. Hell, yeah. uh, Grant Williams injury stinks. Oh, yeah. man. And I don't even want to say anything else about that injury. Shout out to our friend Grant Williams, man. Get well soon. Get well, Get well soon, soon, man. Some of y'all are just um, big fans. Big fans of Grant Williams. Biased. Um, the, the the mellow thing is interesting, though, because I love watching him because he just played like his dad, still a coach. Literally, yeah, yeah. just be doing shit. He, he, lit, I'm, I'm, when you watch him play, it literally looks like you're still watching him play when he was in high school, yeah. playing for a big ball of league. Yeah. Like, it's just a more mature version of it, I guess. And that's, and it, it's honestly fun, and it works. It works for him. So I just, I'm curious to see how this translates to like wins and team success in the future. But for right now, shit, he doing his thing. Who can they trade for? Brandon Ingram. What are they giving up? Well, it'll be Contracts. a Grant Williams deal. Um, probably one of the centers. Josh Green has to be in there. Why the f- do I want Grant Williams, especially out of all times right now, if I'm the Pelicans? It's just to make the money match. You've yeah. been trying to get all Brandon Ingram for he a year and a half. got three years left on that deal. And we, we, He's a good player. We, scrum- we scrunching up change as we speak. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> now, last night, LaMelo started lining up with him, Brandon Miller, Josh Green, Tajan Tiz- Tiz- Salon, and Todd Gibson. <laughs> Tajon Salon, Taj Gibson, and Josh Green combined for how many points, fellas? I'm going to say 16. Eight. Three. They have five points. Yeah. Eight. They have five Eight. points. Bro. How many did – oh, no, I'm not even going to say how many did he have because Diabate run most of those minutes too. They had a game the other night where yeah, LaMelo and Brandon Miller he, I, I really like Diabate. Yeah. It was like Brandon Miller had 32 and LaMelo had 44 or something like that. And it was like, damn. But that's, nobody that's really the only people that can create, honestly, right now. I mean – they try to Great toss it to your bench. 
Yeah. Try to talk I mean, to Seth Curry, but uh, LaMelo and Brandon Miller are the people that really generate the shots. Yeah, the game you're talking about, Derek, they scored 120 points as a team. LaMelo and Brandon Miller scored 82 of them. Yeah. <laughs> That's crazy. That is yeah. crazy. And honestly, they do, they do a lot of, like, they do play off each other, but they do a pretty good job of that, like, Okay, your turn, my turn. Like, I see when you got it going, go ahead, do your thing. Yeah, Brandon Miller. What game was that? Brandon Miller was going crazy. LaMelo was. I think it was the overtime game. You talking about the game that went overtime. Yeah. Is that Detroit? Uh, I think it's the Pistons. It's the Pistons, yeah. And then Brandon Miller had like eight points in overtime. He went crazy. He took over that game late. That was amazing. That was when Kay Cunningham hurt his booty. Yeah. And LaMelo fouled out. Yes. Yeah. Mark Williams and Nick Richards. They need some backup. Isn't that like the second or third time LaMelo's fouled out this season? Yes. He fouls out That's a lot. It's part of the reason why he had got benched at one time. Yes. But yes. Which I'm I wasn't so, mad at. I, but I, I wasn't either, but I'm so glad. I'm so glad that that passed because the the reaction from LaMelo Ball fans and some Charlotte fans was like that was the seventh time they yeah. did that this year. <laughs> you would have thought that LaMelo has been getting DNPs or two-minute Fourth quarters, like they all are ruining year. his potential. Yeah, I'm like, what the hell? <laughs> uh, he can't. There can't be. He can't. The coach can't do what the coach is supposed to do, and like make the right adjustments, and maybe even in the form of like accountability. Mm-hmm. Like he can't enforce that too. Like, I'm I'm with it. Let let the coach coach and do what he's supposed to do. I'm with it too. Especially when again, it ain't like that was the fifth time it happened. Yeah, and it also shows that I'm not playing favoritism. Like there's everybody here has to abide by the same rules. And I, I fuck with that. When you're a fan of organization, I think you would be a fan of that too. But that's why I highlighted like LaMelo Ball fans because I think a lot of it wasn't like we're Hornet fans. Because, I mean, every person who has a first-year coach should want the coach to set a standard yes. that even the best player has to abide by. Because like you said, you know what I mean, it becomes favoritism. And he, he's going to have a he's gonna have a lot of leeway anyway because he's LaMelo. Like, that yeah. just comes with the game. But, yeah, no, you can't have the shot selection that you sometimes have. It's amazing when those shots go in. But when the shots are not going in, those shots could be uh, egregious. And then sometimes the turnovers. And then you combat that with silly fouls out of frustration or laziness because your motor motor is turned off because you can't make a shot. That's detrimental to the team. So we're going to set a standard and say this isn't acceptable. And the way you set the standard is by doing it with your best player. That shit don't hit if that's what – Coach Lee is doing with uh, Misich. <laughs> that shit don't ring. That shit don't do nothing. You got to do it with Lamelo for that to set a standard yeah. and a tone. Yeah. Oh man, anybody get? And it? I think to an extent, it shows the willingness for coaches to like they want to win games or whatever because they're like a lot of traditional times. It's just like you close out with your starters, but sometimes you do have to make a change in order to get the advantage or just for your team to play better. If you have a player struggling, just like just a willingness to make that change so we can try to win this game. Put our best players out there for the right time. I think it's good as you play the long game. Mm-hmm. You show early on, LaMelo, that you're willing to lose the game. Yeah. Well, I'm willing to too. lose this game. because and, and it's going to be a reflection of you because I feel like I have to sit you down. Because what will happen is the players ain't stupid. If you don't do nothing now, it's going to be like, well, I could just do what the hell I want to do. Because he's not going to have, he ain't going to sit me, he ain't going to lose this game. No, I'm willing to lose this game. <laughs> and, boom. and they only lost by one. I mean, they was in, they was they were. in the game. They were. Um, I, I want to talk about the 2022 draft class, y'all. There's a big conversation on Twitter over these last couple days about a redraft. The 2022 draft class. 2022 or 2021? You said 2021. You said 2021. Oh, I'm sorry. 2022. Yeah, because that was the one I was looking at. I was about to say, oh, I was definitely So we're talking about the Palo. We're talking Palo, Chet, uh, Jabari, Keegan, Jaden, Matherin, Sharp, Daniel. So this is. See, I thought you was talking about 2021 because of Franz and everything. That's what I thought you were talking about. Let's let's do 2021 in. 2021 looked damn good. Let's do it. Let's do 2021. I'm ready to do 2022 because when when I told y'all about that, what I heard that person say, my initial mind was the Cooper flag draft. They have to show me, forget ever, that they're the best draft class in the last 10 years because 2022 does not get talked about the way that it should. But let's let's dive into it. So 2021, let's start off here. Um, Kay Cunningham, Jalen Green, Evan Mobley, Scotty Barnes, Jalen Suggs are the top five picks in the draft. We also have Al Prince, Shingoon, mm-hmm. Jalen Johnson, Cam Thomas. This is a heavy-hitting 
one. Uh, Franz Wagner at eight. Yes, this is a heavy hitting one. And, you know, I think it's cool to go do the revisionist history and mm -hmm. do redrafting um did y'all just like do a, a quick like lottery draft redraft or whatever no we were going all through, all through 60 all 60 draft picks oh, okay okay so like my my 54 is gonna have to be david johnson who really only played two minutes in the nba but in those what two college minutes, you went to um let me click his name and find out louisville um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah he went to louisville that's uh, pretty impressive <laughs> i don't even know who david johnson is <laughs> <laughs> He's a good guard in college. Uh, Herb Jones also in this draft class. Uh, hey, so. hey, don't forget the man who say basketball is in this draft class. He sure is. Man. You know, they have a lot of second round picks that have got extensions in this draft as well. Mm -hmm. Like Miles McBride is in the second round. Io DeSumo is in the second round. Nemus Kata is thriving. Mm -hmm. um, who was uh, Aaron Wiggins just got his extension. The man who say basketball. Um, Brandon Boston Jr. is still in the league. He's back, baby. Like they. Delano Banton is doing his thing with the Blazers. Jericho Sims. Like Good this, pick by the this second round this this second round is stacked. And we and we didn't talk about the post. Oh, and Herb Jones. I, I we I, we talked about it a little bit, but Herb there Jones. There was some more the, post lottery picks in there, if I'm not mistaken. Like Trey Murphy the third is in this yes, draft, he is. correct? Yes, he is. Yep. Trey Mann should be in this draft, if I'm not mistaken. Um there's 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 only one Is Quentin Grimes in this draft? I think he is, yeah. Yes, he's twenty fifth. There's only one first round pick. Uh, I'm sorry, three. There's three first round picks, so it's 30 picks. Only three of them are out of the league right now. That's James really impressive. Booknight. James Booknight is out of the league. Uh, Josh, Josh Christopher Primo. is out of the league, and Josh Primo are out of the league. Everybody else is still there. Not everybody's thriving, yeah. but everybody is at least there. Oh, Uzma Garuba also out of the league, but everybody else is still there. Um, Santiago Dom is an amazing role player right now. Like, <laughs> and he was a 30th pick. Yeah, this yeah. draft class is stacked. Um, Who is the first overall pick in a redraft? I still think it's Cade. I, I would so. say Cade. Yeah. Cade Cunningham, yeah. Talking about like most potential. It's talking about like a six, seven, six, eight point guard. That's honestly you I feel like last year it was kind of taken away from us as a fan of watching Cade because that team was so damn bad. Like this Pistons team feels completely different this year. And Cade, it feels like we're actually seeing his progress as a player. Yeah, some monster games and those that shit too, though. He was a he was super frustrated because I know he was like, damn. Yeah. How the if hell I'm, I'm I'm trying to do it between the legs and I'm stepping on four different people because they can't space the float. But yeah. I, I, I thought what he did last year was he with the lack of spacing and the lack of talent that was on that basketball court with him, he still put up good numbers. Like they did lose twenty eight. No. They, did. <laughs> they did. I would still put Cade as my as my number one on this. I group. do too. Yeah. I would too because I think if I put Jalen Green on that team last year, they lose twenty eight in a row. I think if I put Scotty Barnes on there, they lose 28 in a row. Well, the only person Evan that Mobley. could probably be, be a little different is Evan Mobley. But okay, they don't they they lose 22. <laughs> hey, lose 22. nobody gonna remember 22 <laughs> though. It. I'm remembering 22. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I think the draft starts at number two though. So you have Evan Mobley, Scotty Barnes, you have Franz Wagner, you have Al Prince Shingoon. It's probably the main conversation pieces, unless you want to throw in Cam Thomas, Derek. I know you're no, a big Cam guy. For me, number two would be Evan Mobley. Emo. Yeah. I think defensively he's doing so much. And I think he's taking an offensive leap too. My GM cap is so is so much on right now because it it really helps to know what I'm drafting for in a team that I have. Mm -hmm. Um because I think that's where each of these players' value comes in differently. But um hmm. I don't think there's a wrong answer. It's I, not. Yeah. Like it's Evan, not. Scotty. And Franz, and even now P, I can see a world where people in the comment section are saying, making conversations for all of them. Like that's how I tight made, it is. I made my like. But it, I, I agree. But the only thing about some of the people that's going to be in the comments, their argument is going to be based out of who they who plays for their team. True. I'm I made, trying to just take all that away. And I made like a lottery redraft, and at two last night I put Franz. Mm -hmm. I was really in between him and Scotty, and then even so now, like I, I, I kind of want to put Scotty at two. Yeah, the Franz thing, obviously, he's been good his entire career, mm -hmm. but these last two weeks have really made it like a real conversation. Yeah. Um, the only reason I'm not going to do that is because then I would be doing the same thing with Jalen Brown. Yeah. The last two, <laughs> the, the le not weeks. I'm sorry, it was beyond a week, Jalen Green, but. Mm -hmm. If I'm not having that same energy from that shit, March I'm not 2024, that. Jalen Green was Kobe Bryant. <laughs> Stop fucking with it. So it's like, if, if I'm getting that Jalen Green shit, I might have him at one. <laughs> for, 
for that, yeah, for that post little All Star. Hell yeah, he damn near. We turned this one. shit into my team. Just give me that card of him. That uh, that card. But my number two, I'm gonna go with um, I'm gonna go with Scotty Barnes. I'm gonna I'm, go with Scotty Barnes. I'm going Evan Mobley. I think that's probably a lot of biases because I've been an Evan Mobley guy forever, but. His offensive lead this season with the defensive versatility, too, I just feel like that's such a hard player to draft. And he might not have the offensive ceiling as a Scotty or yep. even a Franz, I guess, but that defensive side is, like, top three in the league potential. So yes. I'm going to go with and it. I, the offensive is what, like, makes you really think about it because, again, yeah, he's not no crazy offensive player, but at his size, he does some really cool things yeah. for, like, he could really put it on the floor sometimes that he could go to the paint, finish strong, if he could get a like a really decent like consistent jumper where it's just respectable, I mean like he's you can't really ask more for a player. It's so difficult to judge it compared to those dudes because he'll never have to wear the backpack. Mm -hmm. yeah, like yeah. Franz is wearing that backpack right Back. now. Scotty Barnes is wearing the backpack. Evan Mobley's always gonna have at least one of those guards, you would assume. Yeah. And yeah, I that's gonna make the job easier him for him by himself. Yeah. I remember that and one. And if it's not them, it's Ty Jerome, who's damn near an all-star, too. <laughs> so, you know, that's what makes evaluating him a little bit different than the Okay, third overall pick, who y'all got? Evan Mobley. Uh, this is where I would take Franz. I got Scotty here. It's hard between Scotty and Franz, man. It really is. Because I, mm. I, I'm not – and then I've been thinking about this. Who has the more offensive parts of their game? Between Scotty and Franz. What do you mean when you say offensive? I think Franz has. Who better. would you trust to create more? Franz, Franz Wagner. Yeah. But especially with the playmaking leap that he's taken this year. Yeah. Yeah. The most impressive thing with Scotty Barnes, though, is like the versatility and the uniqueness. Mm -hmm. It's just, you don't, that don't, that's not really falling off the trees that much. Um, Scotty Barnes theoretically can run your offense and then go and guard Palo Ben Carroll in the seven defense game is series. You're not, you're, not, you're just not getting that. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Luckily, the Warriors got it in Draymond in the second round. That was a blessing from God. But to be able to get that from Scotty Barnes at the age that he's at, I mean, it, it's just it's too safe. It's too safe to not take because if the 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 floors is great, but mm -hmm. then the trajectory of like and you know he's he's getting better at shooting that yes. ball too, and that's what's really was like last year he was just holding creating. Them yes. Yeah. That's a good way to think about it, floor versus floor. Because, I mean, in the NBA draft in general, nobody really thinks about floor. It's more about ceiling because you want a guy that can turn into an all-NBA player. I think that's why a lot of teams have this wide discrepancy in the league is because a lot of them go in thinking ceiling, ceiling, ceiling. You have to consider the floor. Damn, Stanley Johnson. You have to. Because if not, you're going to end up like a lot of these teams who just shooting and shooting and shooting and you missing and missing and missing and you look up and your franchise hasn't made the playoffs in years or come close. Jalen J Dub was a floor pick and his ceiling is way higher than a lot of people saw. Yeah. Um, I agree. So But I also think that's a great example too of drafting because you take a guy who has a safe floor, but in the right environment, everybody nobody everybody has no ceilings in the right environment. I could take a guy that has nothing but floor. I could go in a draft and take a four-year guy who's not young, don't you can't really see potential, but I put Cam Johnson on the Phoenix Suns, his ceiling is totally different because of just the environment alone. Mm -hmm. Just the environment alone, you take a guy and you say, all I need you to do is guard the perimeter, and shoot versatility, and stand your ass here, and Devin Booker will, and Chris Paul will create shots for you as long as you make them. And then and now you're the most coveted thing in the league. I'm going to go Scotty here, then Franz next. Yeah. I'm going the same thing with KB. Yeah. Um, okay. Next picks we got, and I'm just giving you uh, people that could be in conversations. This is the fourth pick or the fifth? This is, this the is like pick. six, right? This would be like five. Yeah. I think so. We had Cade as the con basic consensus number one. I think, regardless of where you have him, the next three is probably Franz, Scotty, and Emo. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That I would have us at five. Okay. So, fifth pick people, and I'm just naming them. It's going to be uh, Jalen Green. It's going to be Jalen Suggs. It's going to be Alperen Shingoon. It's going to be Trey Murphy, Jalen Johnson, Cam Thomas, Herb Jones. Those are the major uh, For me, it would be Alpi. Alpi, yeah. Yeah, I think Alpi. I, of... I feel like that's a consensus. Yeah. And then when you're talking about going to number six. I'm going Jalen Suggs at six. I was going Jalen Johnson. I went Jalen Johnson at six. I was going Jalen. I think his potential is a lot higher. And yeah. he's He's got a good floor, and he's. Yeah. The potential is there. Like I said earlier, like, it feels like Atlanta's doing a lot of, like, 
experimenting with his playmaking this season. Like they want Trey Young to be a little bit more off the ball and he's shown some flashes, but I, just for his size to be able to do some things, it's just really cool. And then, and defensively, he could be a connecting piece or, or anchor. So I, I really, I really mess with Jalen Johnson. Yeah, I just, I just think he does so much more for me on the basketball court than what a Jalen Suggs would bring. And I could see him also being like a true number one guy, maybe at some point. You elite. think so? Or maybe a, like a really, really like a good elite number two. Number two, yeah. I yeah, think he would be a that. good number two. Yeah, I would have to agree with Derek. I'm going Jalen Johnson. So I'm gonna go Jalen Johnson. My next pick. And that leaves people like Cam Thomas, Herb Jones, um, Jalen Suggs for the rest of y'all. Josh Giddy is still here. This is why I'm taking Jalen Green. I mean, we yeah, got the I would same. take Jalen Green here. Jalen Green Suggs is seven. Suggs still falling on my board. Um, we also got Trey Greg, Murphy Greg the Brown the third. Haven't said. He said who? Greg Brown the third. Who? Is he, he in conversation right on now? He was decent. <laughs> he was decent. He had some good years. Oh, yeah, he is. Yeah, he is. My bad. I thought. I don't know why. I didn't, I didn't see his name. Uh, um, you said seven with Jalen Green. Eight is where I had Herb Jones. I don't okay. I think so around this area where we kind of talked about Jalen Green, Herb Jones, then you said Cam Thomas, Jalen Suggs. I feel like these were guys that were more like they were elite at one like elite at one kind of area, whether it be defense or offense and kind of like whether it comes down to. Jalen Green was still one of those guys I feel like his floor is still like a decent score, but like at his highest, he's still probably an All NBA player, to at least an All Star. So I kind of took that in consideration. I took him off the board just for like potential reasons. Still, the back end in this lottery stinks. It's I no, think, it's solid still. I would say it's still. Solid. No, I'm, ta- I'm talking about the real one, not the yeah, one. Uh, uh, I'm talking about Davion uh, Mitchell, Zaire Williams, James Booknight, Josh Primo, and then yeah, Chris when Dorte. When I first looked at the lottery, I was like, it's a lot of guys that can go. And then I got happier as I went down the list, and I was like, okay, once you get to ten, in it. it's nothing but upside. Yeah. Yeah. Just, just take Trey Murphy the third. Or just take Corey Kisper. It's nothing but upside right there. But uh, anyway, I agree with that, Mike. I think Jalen Green, we talk about Jalen Green a certain way because he's a second pick. If Jalen Green was picked at 9 or 10, we we talking about it totally different. It's totally different. If he's the 10th pick, of if, they, if this draft went differently in 2021 and the Rockets got Jalen Green at 10, I think it's just a different conversation. Yeah. Personally. Um, but when you take him over Evan Mobley and Scotty Barnes and Franz – and, you know, you're getting the results that you get, you know. So, um, what pick are we on? I'm sorry, seven? Yeah. Seven, yeah, that's where I would have taken Jalen Green. Uh, for seven, this is probably, I have to take Jalen Suggs here. What he can do defensively, uh, the fact that um, he's found a role and, you know, shooting the ball better. I'm, I'm, you just can't pass up on that, so I'll, I'll take Jalen So I can't keep letting him fall too low because uh, I, I looked up. he he Man, he had a chance of slipping. Yeah. I mean, I'm just thinking about that elite-level defense. Um, the shooting this season is back to where it was two years ago, <laughs> so you hope that this is just a bad little streak. Uh, but a lot of the times you do see players have that really great season, and that's it. Mm-hmm. So I'm praying that that's not his case. He already got his bag, so I guess it don't matter grand scheme. But it matters for the Orlando Magic, for him to be a threat from three-pointers. This year, he's shooting 31% from three. Last year was 39%. Um, but also, pretty much everybody on, on the Orlando Magic that was looked at to be a shooter is not shooting well. Game yesterday was had about 66 points on both sides going into the fourth quarter for the Orlando Magic versus Charlotte. I, I, so happy I didn't watch that game. But that it was it was I tweeted it out it was an insanely nasty game, but it was one of them nasty games that I like because it was like it was a scrap for every bucket. That I like. okay. It was a scrap for every bucket. That's why LaMelo had like 40 out of the out of the 80 plus or 90, whatever it was. Oh man. But that's the appreciation of Jalen Suggs. If he ain't gonna if he ain't gonna get you none, he ain't gonna let them get none either. <laughs> yeah. They had a Jonathan Isaac three hit like hit one of them two K roll bounces. They said it was the Kawhi roll because they hit the it hit the uh. rim like seven times or whatever and then bounced <laughs> in. I'm like, oh man. Uh, so the back end here for me, I'm gonna go Jalen Green. I'm gonna go. I'm I'm sorry. I'm gonna go Herb Jones. I'm gonna go Jalen Green, and then I'm gonna go Trey Murphy, and then Cam. That's go, that's gonna be the end of my ten. Okay, so that was number seven. That's the seven. We were on number seven, right? No, we're on number eight. Yeah, I keep uh, forgetting about my dog, bro. So I'm going to undo my pick. I'm taking Trey Murphy. I'm not letting Trey Murphy fall that, this low. Because I truly believe that there's a version of Trey Murphy we haven't seen. And I, nobody else has to consider it, but I will. So 
Jalen Green is my seventh pick, not uh, Jalen Suggs. You ain't taking Josh Giddy. I was gonna, I wanted nope. to ask y'all, where would y'all take a Josh Giddy in this? Like into the lottery. I yeah. uh, like I said in my little mock lottery, I had him at thirteen. Yeah. Like I feel like there's still something there, but it's a lot to like. I guess not like from him or Kaminga. 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 Right, yeah, probably Kaminga. I'm, like, ta- I'm taking a lot of people over Josh Giddy. Yeah, because even Herb Jones is here. I would take Herb. I'm Jones. taking Herb Jones too. I would take. I'm taking Miles, Cam Thomas. I would take Miles McBride over him. Damn, you is. Yeah. Would y'all take? Wouldn't y'all even take Aaron Wiggins over Giddy? I took. I put Aaron Wiggins over Josh. Yeah, Giddy. Yeah, I would take Aaron Wiggins over Josh Giddy. He was the 55th pick. The Miles McBride one, I I fuck with, but the Aaron Wiggins, I, I might I might have to take Josh Giddy. I just think those dudes have way more upside when they don't have the ball, and it might be just a determinative factor in it all. Like Miles can play off ball while Jalen. Brunson does his part. Josh Giddy's not really doing anything off ball. And he's a terrible help defender. Like, have you ever watched Josh Giddy? Does help. I, you watch him. <laughs> I'm like, you look at me dead in my eyes. Like, I ain't watch every second Bro, this season. <laughs> what the? What does he be doing in help? He's in help, but he's not helping. But when when like he's when, he's just there. And that was first couple of years when when people like Josh Giddy was anything different. No, I mean I I don't know. So maybe it was, was in so OKC. Why wasn't it maybe I, maybe it just wasn't as obvious in OKC. No, it was obvious to OKC fans. Oh, we we're watching every night. Now that I'm watching them in Chicago, it's just like because that'd be the cer- that'd be certain things that I feel like be happening where like certain things go on social media and then it's like 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 honestly, bro, I'm like how we talking about a 55th pick versus the sixth pick? Yeah, I just think that some of the conversation with Josh Giddy is going to go a little too go, just go, just go a little too far. I'm yeah, I'm, I'm not. The Miles McBride. He's pretty good at some see. things. He's really bad at other things. That's, yeah. that's just And I'm just saying, if I, if I had a team, and you're talking about I'm bringing in a young guy, I would much rather bring in Aaron Wiggins right now instead of jo- Josh Giddey. Aaron Wiggins, number one, is significantly older than Josh Giddey. If you talk true. About, that's you say true. young guy. The second thing, too, is it, this the situation that Aaron Wiggins is playing in is going to be a lot more suitable. Because he was a 50, 55th pick, there wasn't much expectation. So that's why I'm saying when we, we when we revisit this, those are some of the things we have to keep in mind. I don't know. I feel like when you're playing on a team that's a winning, pick. when you're winning at that high of a level, there is kind of expectation. I think Aaron Wiggins. Came None of out. those expectations fall on Aaron Wiggins. No, no but I think yeah. he did a great job that, of capitalizing just, on that's the, just how the opportunities he he did get. Because he could have definitely no, came I'm not in taking, there and I'm shit not the ta- bed. I'm not taking anything away from Aaron Wiggins, but I think when you see a lot of good teams, everybody is playing well. Mm-hmm. It's just have, you have a good team that you're benefiting from. But, like, when we saw Josh Giddy with them, he didn't come off the bench for them. He, he didn't Only come second in, halves. He didn't, he, didn't come, he didn't come into games um, the same way Aaron Wiggins did. So I just feel like the responsibility is going to be totally different. It's nothing to take away from Aaron Wiggins. He did yeah. everything he's supposed to do. I'm damn sure not going to discredit Miles McBride either. But yeah. I'm just just pointing. Yeah, Aaron Wiggins is just a, a better, better plug-and-play player. I don't know if that makes him a better basketball player. For sure. Um. Especially again at the fifty fifth pick versus a top ten pick. But he does have the benefit of saving <laughs> basketball. So it's like <laughs> Hey, we just gotta have like a counter for how many times he say he saved basketball. <laughs> All right, let, that's enough on the twenty twenty one draft. Shout out to Aaron Wiggins. I've decided we'll do twenty twenty two next week. Um when we come back from this break, we got some fictional awards to give out for the first month of the NBA season. Stay I tuned. Can't wait. Why should you bet with Caesars Sportsbook? Two words, Caesars Rewards. Every bet brings you closer to the type of benefits only Caesars can offer. Hotel stays, VIP experiences, sports and concert tickets, and more. It's not just an app, it's an empire. Adam Silva hit me up and said, hey, our NBA awards are fucking boring. Can you spice them up? Can you give us some cool ones? I said, without a doubt. So here are some awards. Let's get it. Y'all let me know who y'all got winning. Look his teammate off award. A player who is not swinging that damn ball. Uh, number one came to my mind was Cam Thomas. He does not swing that damn ball. Right, <laughs> rightfully will, so. He will take that contested Sometimes. mid-range jumper yeah. with you standing there like this, and then he make it, and you're just like, yeah, what yeah. you going to do about it? Hey, no. <laughs> I got one, two, three. I got four names. Kyle Kuzma. Yep. Yep. Benedict Matherin. Yeah. Benedict Matherin was he came to my mind as well. Norman Powell. Yeah. <laughs> and then a guy that don't fit none of them, but but does fit this, Dylan Brooks. <laughs> Dylan Brooks don't swing. 
Only, you know? only on opposing team. You. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's, 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 your, that's who your 2K comp is, Dylan Brooks. You catching that, and because y'all don't have no only bag, on the offensive side though. Yeah, only on the offensive. <laughs> side. You only got the bad part of Dylan. It's Brooks. like y'all catch it, and because y'all don't have no bag and can't create for nobody else, y'all like shit. I just gotta <laughs> shoot it now. <laughs> I had Tobias Harris here. Oh, you, ah, Tobias Harris do not. There was a possession. I wrote it down in my notes with eight minutes and eighteen seconds left in the first quarter where he is sitting on the wing calling for the ball because he's got a mismatch, and he creates absolutely nothing with that ball. <laughs> and then on the um, st strong side corner, somebody open, and he's just not giving him that damn ball. And that's just kind of been Toby for some time. I mean, he'll, I mean he'll, I'm mean, he i not saying he doesn't do it like Cam. Like, Cam really don't swing that fucking ball. But Tobias be having those moments where it's like, I got us, and he don't be having them. And Colin Sexton. Mm. Yeah, I can see that. Also, I don't even know. Cause he, he like there's some players that you don't really expect to like really play make or swing the ball. I never really thought about how low OG assist numbers be for somebody who be playing like 40 <laughs> minutes. OG Adenobi <laughs> is a king cherry picker, by the way. Yeah. Did y'all watch last night? No, he I had didn't. like six breakaway dunks where he bro, just bro. It was like a couple games ago, and I don't know if he was just cherry picking, but he had like nine dunks in a game. Yeah. <laughs> some of those was just sitting in the dunker spot, but like last night, I mean the defense was fun. What, Mm -hmm. you know it was had? a good defensive game. You said what? You know how much he had? 38. Yeah, 40. 40. Oh, he actually got the he 40? He got to 40. Oh. And uh, some of them was really just him breaking away after a shot went up and nobody getting back on defense. Him just dunking the damn ball. Remind me of yesterday, we playing wreck. d Mill said, Kyron Leak. He said, you ain't got to tell me. <laughs> 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 second award is I'm number two, but I could be one. The second option that y'all think could this be a, a first option. a very hard question for me. Yeah, I, I was going to say, did this come from Franz? Um, yeah, well, yeah, it was inspired by Franz Wagner. Mm -hmm. uh, I did Shaden Sharp. So are we calling? So he's he's like the award is named after him. Okay, so you can't pick. This him. is why it's hard for me because he you're saying Shaden Sharp, but like Shaden Sharp is young and they don't have a direct number one option. So it's like that's why it was hard because a lot of the guys that came to my mind were like Shaden Sharp. It's probably be like I mean I think the next best answer would probably be like Jalen Brown. Oh, I thought he was gonna say Jalen Williams. They do. Oh, uh, that would be that would be that would be that one too. See, Jalen Williams is so interesting because, like, yeah, I would like to see him be the number one guy. But, like, seeing him next to Shea, it just looks so magical. It looks so mm -hmm. perfect. And it's like, how well does he fit as being the guy? Yeah. Like, I, I, don't I, know. I always think I about love him where he at. Stay yeah. where you at, Jalen. Yeah, I haven't I haven't got that itch to see him be the first option. Yeah, I don't have, I don't have that desire. I've been either. thinking about the luxury that. But, like, we don't really always think about when it comes to, like, those second or even third guys where it's just, like, they don't get those primary lockdown. They're like, they usually get the second. Or maybe yeah. even it's, like, somebody who really can't even play that much defense. So they get the benefit of the doubt some nights when it's, like, they have their main guy on the floor. I think that's just more – I think that's more valuable than trying to prove you're number one. Yeah. He's going to he's going to get paid. In this generation, you don't have to go average 30 to get paid. Like, the team knows how valuable you are. You know the the way the market is. You could just he he's going to get his crazy. He might he's going to probably get a match extension. Yeah, for so sure. So just stay there. That's what uh, back in the day you probably had to go and prove you was. Mm -hmm. Then you know you see guys like I need my own team, but you don't have to do that today. So just be number two. That, that's how I feel about Jalen Brown. It's just like perfect example. Yeah, it's just like he. Hey, y'all want to go double trap Tatum? Bet I, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna <laughs> go for thirty. And y'all don't want to put y'all best defender on me. Y'all put it on Tatum. Bet I'm gonna go for thirty, and that's why I think it's like, why would you want to kind of leave? That? The other question is, where else do you go? Yeah, because yeah. you're gonna go somewhere and have to keep compete with somebody. You know, for those players that don't, I guess you, you we can say on Jalen Brown, players that haven't really developed all that playmaking. Wait till you're the number one option in teams is just all up on you, and you, you have to have pass no the choice. ball. You Ch got to young. So yeah, that's the young players. I'm with you with Shaden Sharp. Yeah, uh, the older players though is where it got a little tricky. I couldn't really. Yeah, I'm seeing older players. They kind of already are like in a, like you don't want to see Norm Powell with his own. Yeah, team? Yeah, no, I don't want to see Norm <laughs> Powell with his own team. <laughs> the one, the I, one name I was able to muster up was, this is gonna be interesting, Jaron Jackson Jr. Ooh. Just because of the way his game is going, he, was he has taken the offensive year. leap, but kept, he kept it up this year. That's that was just me forcing yeah. an answer because I think everybody who's kind of in a complimentary number two role. Hey, man, that's just who you is, bro. Everybody else is going to be a young player. Brandon Miller, he's, what, this is year two? These are yeah. all young guys. Can, can I rephrase the question a little bit? Of course. 
because this dude has been a number one, but he's the number two now. But he's playing. Kyrie? No. Oh. James Harden with Kawhi out is back to a number one right now. In the literal sense, yeah. He changed. He's still shooting 30% from the field. But he, yeah. when he's talking about like <laughs> he's still, taking he's a, a team, four riser offensively. For yeah, sure. for sure. For sure. I can say that. Uh, that next one. I think he's shooting 30% from the field. I'm mm-hmm. exaggerating. It's like 36 percent or something. Which is when still. it's in the 30s, it's 30. Yeah. You don't do no rounding up when it's in the 30s. It's only, <laughs> only three pointers where you round up. Would yeah, it be like 39.6? Yeah, you're like 40 percent three point shooter. Give me more minutes, players. Y'all want to see play more this season? I like Holek. Ooh, the guy hey. over Cameron Payne. Yeah. Okay. I was excited to see Tyler Colek come into the league. I thought that offensively, I thought he could bring a lot to the Knicks. I thought he would get more minutes than campaign, but. So far, it's been campaign, so maybe eventually he'll get it, but We're the same Tom Thibodeau time. likes campaign, I guess. I got poor former Tom Thibodeau guy, and then back to That's true. Thibodeau so he guy. probably once you get that Tom Thibodeau trust. Stamp of approval, yeah, baby. Yes, that stamp of approval. <laughs> <laughs> I got Johnny Ju saying. He wow. wow. Behind. So that's a deep cut. I did not know you knew who that was. Every every time he's in the game, he he's getting buckets. He shoot, what yeah. school he went to? He went to uh he went to school. You can you can get this. You got UCLA, to, yeah. He went. He played against Mike. UCLA just sure did in um in March. I remember he was he was giving the ass buckets. He went somewhere too. before that too. UCLA just beat South Carolina. Uh, yes, was that yesterday? Two days ago. Women's team. South Carolina won forty six yeah, straight because they I lost saw, UCLA. Uh, I saw a Aja Wilson post. I'm glad I ain't got no UCLA teammates. Oh, uh, yeah. Because whenever South Carolina beat th- their school, she make them like like wear the wear gear. Sh- yeah, yeah, wear the gear. Yeah, it was a blowout too. It wasn't even close. That was Sunday night. It wasn't Sunday close. Afternoon. It wasn't really close. I tuned in at halftime. They were down by 15. I was like, "Oh snap, this might be wraps." And I didn't watch the second half because it looked like it was gonna be wraps. <laughs> um, player you want to see play more? You said Huck Porty. You said Tyler Coleg. You said Johnny Ju saying This might be a cop out answer. Fucking give Donovan Clink at 50 minutes a game. <laughs> All of them plus a couple more. You know, I he's thought gonna, about him. He's but not going to sustain him. I know, I know. Yeah. I thought about him, but I was like, he's getting minutes now. Yeah, this is <laughs> not enough. Like, they played yesterday against, what, the Grizzlies, and he was injured, and they looked like a way different basketball team than two nights ago when they played against the Rockets. Yeah. Um, if they played the way they played against the Timberwolves, they'd be in a playoff hunt, boy. They did look deep. What about Rob Dillingham? I thought about it. Yeah. Thought about it. He still looks so small on the court when he, he looks does tiny. minutes, yeah, bro. He, he does. looks little as hell. He is. How tall is he? Is he, he probably like a six, six foot one. even. But yeah, he also he is skinny one. as hell, too, so that he don't is. help him. I would yeah. say, yeah. Because Scoot is only 6'1". So Scoot looks he's stocky. Yeah. Is there any way to answer our qu- answer that question but without young players? Let's, ex- let's exclude year one and two players. Who is a uh, – well – you did that, Mike, with Johnny Tuzang. Um, <laughs> I mean, at that point, too, it's just like you just got John Collins eating a lot of like. Larry. John Collins been hooping, too, though. Yeah. They just got forwards that eat up those minutes. Uh, Corey Joe. <laughs> All right. Play Corey Joe over Cole. No, Anthony, yeah, no, no first is the sophomore players and no 38 year olds. Between 25 and 30. Need uh, more minutes. I feel like somebody on the Miami Heat could use some more. <laughs> I don't know what's his name, Pele Larson. Is that how you pronounce oh, it? There you go. He been from hooping. Arizona. He been hooping. I tried putting him in a trade and I was getting cooked on Twitter. Yeah. My I told gone. you that was going to happen oh, on you the did? show. Wait, what was <laughs> the they trade? are not letting go. Um, I think it was a Kuzma trade we did last episode. Yeah, yeah. it was. And I was and like, I they're not trading. I I literally put him in there. Just we, knew that money. Bull- <laughs> we knew that trade was going to be on some bullshit too. You said, I was doing it right here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I hate when people clip the show, but don't give the full context. Oh, they clipped it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. it was a tweet. It was yeah. like a tweet, and a Miami Heat fans were just. They still replying in the comments. <laughs> <laughs> to this day. I don't blame him. Trade him, trade his ass. No damn cow cool. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Him and Jimmy Butler going to get into it day one. Stockton and Malone, the best two-man game in the NBA. Uh, I had AD and LeBron here. Seems like whenever they run in that pick and roll, something good happens out of it. That's I just like watching. Does it, it have game. to be a literal pick and roll? Because no. I'm going to go Jalen Brunson and Carl Anthony Towns. I think the Knicks offense is just... It's like third in the league right now. It's phenomenal. And I don't think we hit our full strength. Last night yeah. was so eye-opener. Like when we had 70 combined between those two, and then Brunson still had yeah. what, 17 assists. It, in the first quarter, I should have knew that shit was over because they swinging the ball around, and it gets to Jalen Brunson top of the key wide open, and Michael Porter Jr. did one of these. 
<laughs> bro, that's Jalen Brunson. You waving off Jalen Brunson? Did y'all see what Jamal Murray's quote was no. last night in the presser? He said, it's a long season. It's a long season. Guys have lives outside of basketball. We just beat L.A. in L.A. We've got some guys who live in L.A., so stayed in L.A. I don't think the focus was – was there for everybody, and that's what happens when you don't have the focus. So that's was, some lame ass shit. He just did the UFC thing three nights ago. Yeah. Then he leave the game like he he had a game, and then the night between his two games, he went to the UFC event. Mm -hmm. So he can't call out his teammates for staying at home for an extra day when he some... just went across the country to watch a fight and Let, play like shit. Let's keep the quotes going. Mike Malone on if the Nuggets will flush this loss versus the Knicks. Nah. Excuse my language, people at home. Fuck that. You don't flush when you get embarrassed. You don't flush when you gave up 145 you points. You don't flush when it's just peace. Save the environment. I'm not flushing anything. Second quote, that's Michael a, Malone. It's a nasty. I'm not Russell flushing. Westbrook, he's vocal. But we need more than Russ. I need Nikola Jokic. Ooh. I need Jamal Murray. I need guys that have been here in that starting lineup to be vocal. I like it. He applying pressure. That's one of the reasons I, I really do like Mike Malone. I love yeah. him. Like, yeah. Only time Michael Porter Jr.'s vocals on that damn podcast. Yeah, Mike. Can't get him to talk on the court. Mike Malone is one of them coaches that after the game, he's sweating probably just as hard, and you would have thought he played in the game too. Ooh. Michael Malone. Oh, okay, yeah. Don't just I, well, you would have thought that. he was your brother the way you act about him. He is. He's not my brother, but he is. A brother. A brother. The Jamal Murray quote was crazy. He's a man. <laughs> the Jamal Murray quote was crazy because they played Saturday in L.A. What uh, is he saying that they stayed Saturday night, Sunday, and flew in Monday, and that's why they weren't focused? They had, or is he? They had friends giving the states. Like, <laughs> how long did they like? Did they just stay out late Saturday and then they flew in? Hey man, like, you got your ass bust. That's yeah. what it was. We not finna do no investigation. No, nah, it's just this shit ain't new. He been in league for how many years? Yeah. Hey, we getting old because and players like him are now year eight, yeah. almost ten. <laughs> why are you staying late in L.A. when you know you got to fly to New York? Because this that's is what they, stupid. but this this is also they didn't why have to. They flew to Denver. That was a home game. They got their ass bust. But oh, is, I thought they flew to New York. But My this bad. is the thing. They always do these things. That's why what he's saying don't even matter. He just yeah. KB said he just did it. I ain't know nothing about no UFC shit. Yeah, but he just did. This is what they always. This this ain't new. This is what they do. Yeah, the only like you got your ass bust because y'all need to be better. That's all it was. was not just sound like an excuse. We caught y'all on a really good night. We probably if we played y'all again today, we wouldn't do that. Probably. Man, P. I would have beat you in that game if I wasn't sleepy. <laughs> That's what he be doing. <laughs> if my player scored sleepy. two more touchdowns, I would have won in this week. <laughs> well, yeah, if my team scored two more touchdowns, we would have beat your ass even more. You just Anybody gotta call can a spade win. A spade. If, yeah. My pick for this is uh, Chris Paul and Victor Wembanyama. You cherry picking shit. To get, <laughs> I see what's going on. <laughs> I wanna. I'm gonna add. Austin Reeves on top of that LeBron one because Austin Reeves pick and roll with Anthony Davis is whoa, pretty elite. Whoa. So y'all got two of the best two man games in basketball. Is well, what you're it, it's also revolved around Anthony Davis. So it's one of the best, okay. and that makes sense. But also uh, Darius Garland and Jared Allen. I'm Honestly, you can pick one of the bigs. I, I'm a, I'm a, it feels like it's Jared Allen most of the time. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna go uh, go with them, but probably about as consistent as you can get. Next one, take them shits off. Miami worst, Heat. The worst jersey award. Miami Heat he culture. I agree. Either the <laughs> no Heat or the Celtics. Yeah. yeah. Those are my top. I'm also three. not a fan of the jerseys the Nuggets had on yesterday. The five, the five thousand two hundred. Look better than jerseys. The, the black ones, mm -hmm. but I'm still, yeah, just don't take that shit. The off. reason I wrote this one is because the Atlanta Hawks jersey last night looked so much better, not on person. They put them on and I'm like, ew. Them, like they had the baby blue stripe down the side, and I'm ah. Somebody got some baby blue that oh, the Giannis in them. That little blue that they was wearing, I don't know if it's baby blue, but that blue is nice. Uh, don't worry, it's just a slump. A player who has started off slow but you think will pick it up. Jamal Murray. I think he'll eventually pick it up. I, it would be hard for me to believe that the guy we've seen through like the first six or seven years throughout his career has just fell off the earth. Mm -hmm. James Harden. Good like, answer. Is he going to be 50, 40, 90? Hell no. It's a little too late for that. Um, <laughs> but I think he's not going to shoot 30% on a year. His shots are still so tough. They are, though. Yeah. They are. God. Well, he it's doesn't have that explosiveness to create space no more. And, but I think but he, he still gets to a spot. I think they don't have to always be so tough. He's a home run hitter, man. That's why his— He won a four-point play every time he shoots. And same thing with the turnovers. He has turnovers, but when you look at, like, the assists, he could, he could, he could not have so many turnovers, but he be trying to get passes. And he, he said that at the beginning of the season, yeah, I thought did. he was going to stop. 
You said no. he could fix the one because you say I'll be forcing a lot of them sometimes. Yeah, he and... forces a whole lot of them. <laughs> but I get it. You know what I mean? He still, you know, the assist to turnover ratio ain't that bad. So he I'm just say, be trying uh, to get home runs. Not, I guess, all his shooting, but mostly Luca's three ball. It just ain't been mm. hitting the same way. It's been like low 30%. Okay. Next one. Only a few more. Get this man on a new team. Self explanatory. Player you want to see traded. Cam Whitmore. I'm really, I'm really excited to see. I want to see Cam Whitmore on a new team. I just feel like that Houston Rockets team has a lot of pieces that play his position, and it's going to be hard for him to fight for minutes there. And that shit, I just think he has so much more potential than what the Houston Rockets can give him. When you talk about minutes. Corey Kispert. I think Corey Kispert could really give something to one of these teams um, that are competing for something more. But there are so many guys. I, I, we could we could say it right here for so much. Half of the Portland Trailblazers: Robert Williams, Anthony Simons, Jeremy Grant, Matisse Thybulle, uh Half of the Nets: Dennis Schroeder, Cam Thomas, Cam Johnson, Dorian Finney-Smith, Ben Simmons. Shit, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I got, I got a give Ben Simmons to the a Warriors. top guy that I kind of want to see on a new team. Trey Young. You and- ready for that? I'm kind of split. Like he, I, I feel like the Hawks have hit a stand, like a standstill with him. Obviously, you don't want to always just rush and move things around because one or two years down the road, hey, maybe they have one more piece of like him, Zachary Risache, uh, and Jalen Johnson just hooping out this world, and it's just you not too far from that. But it just feels like they hit like a you can't be a top four to five team with this team. Yeah, but like you're looking at the play in damn near every year. DeAndre Hunter, I'm ready to see him on the team too. I'm been so over that. And it like not that he's bad, but he just feels like a guy that uh-huh. they've and had in rumors for. Trey Young seems years. like he's the type of dude that like he could still be just as good and effective and like this time, whereas you're kind of like working on development with these other guys, but at the same time, it's like the other team could probably use that like big like point guard who can give him 25 and 10 a night. I don't the question think they're that is far where. away. I don't think I that, know that's the hardest thing. It's just weird. I don't think they that far away. They be showing flashes where like when they just they, don't they don't defend shit. When that's they get the, to a certain point, they're, they're gonna be all right. They just haven't had a year. Re, I mean, no, I take that back. They've had one year in the Trey Young era where the defense was at least okay, and that was the year that they went to the fucking conference finals. And I'm not saying he is the absolute problem. Obviously, he's got better. He's taking strides, but just in general, they haven't been able to build a defensive infrastructure, and they brought in three different coaches trying to do that. Quinn Snyder has been known as a defensive coach his entire career. He's in Atlanta. They still can't play defense. They not even call him a defensive coach no more. He's now known for his fucking red glasses. <laughs> it's all you know Quinn Snyder for nowadays. Yeah, it's, it's, Do you consider Quinn Snyder a defensive coach? I mean, he was with Utah, but also he had Rudy Gobert. Boom. Boom. So I don't know. So you're saying Rudy Gobert is the system? For sure. Thank you for that. That defensive system. That's what made me ask that because it's like. Thank you for what's that. It, what's our Gobert system called? It's <laughs> called the funnel system. No you disrespect know. to Quinn Snyder. Because you just funneled it all to Gobert. Quinn, Quinn Snyder is an offensive mastermind too, though. He is. Yeah. <laughs> he said this like he could not believe it. Because I was going to say, when I seen him with Utah, I don't see no offensive mastermind. I see Donovan Mitchell trying to save, save everybody. I mean, you can only work with what you have, but the shit that they have. Oh, yeah, Bogdanovich was really good for them. I, I like the way that years. they play. They just space, space the foe out, let him go to work, surrounded him monthly with shooters. Uncle Mike, they had a little run there. You don't forget about when Joe Ingles locked up a PG. Oh, George. <laughs> 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 can't forget that one. <laughs> uh, last one. Oh, George is crazy. The new guy. Player finding his way into your favorite players list. Uh, for me, it was R.J. Barrett. Wow. R.J. Barrett. I like that. I kind of had that thing too, Derek, where people leave the Knicks and then I start liking them. It, and then they the get Raptors, to the Knicks yeah. and for some reason I just don't like them anymore. It's and with weird. the Raptors, has been very fun. Yeah. Like, especially when you're talking about without Quickly and um, Scotty Barnes, RJ Barrett was doing his thing. He was at one point top 12 in the league in scoring. He was giving you 30 point uh, double doubles with assists. And it was like, damn, RJ got game. His playmaking leap has been fun this year. So everything about RJ has been very good this season. Now, I don't know how much of that is going to translate once they get fully healthy and what version of him we're going to get. But for right now, he's definitely somebody I like to tune into. I got a weird name. Mo Wagner is low-key one of my favorite <laughs> players. Oh, he's he's always Bro, he, like one of those backup bigs I love watching. Yeah, 
we've been talking about a six man that can provide a little bit of whatever you kind of need. He's a dude that can score, rebound, block shots, dunk on you. and He bring that energy. The that connection energy. with him and Franz is crazy real, too, when they're on the For court. Real? Yeah, I'm just joking. <laughs> I wonder why too. It's like they've been playing together for their whole life. <laughs> <laughs> you know they still live together. They do. I would be surprised. Together, yeah. You for know, real? you can get a house big enough to where we seen them do an interview and they was definitely doing it together. But that was years ago to see that they still they still live together. And I forget Fra- one of them doesn't have a car. Franz for the move. Boy. The other one does. Franz ain't got that bag for the move. <laughs> why don't one of them have a car? Like no license. Just, they've always just traveled together. So one of them just is a driver. I forget which one. That that part of the story, I don't remember. I wonder what all the NBA players that lived together. You remember when uh, Jeremy Lin was sleeping on Landry Fields couch? Yeah, when he mm-hmm. first joined the Knicks. Yeah. Yep. Did they used to say that in 2K? Yeah, I feel <laughs> like they did. <laughs> when you can Putting his business yeah. out there like that. Remind I mean, me of could... somebody. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, favorite player, the Jaron Jackson, but I also want to give like a deep cut too. Probably... Um, Delano Ben. I like that. Welcome to the fan club, brother. The fan club was there in Toronto, then it kind of died down a little bit. But I like guys who can still go get their shit in garbage time. I want to see him get traded, too. I feel like he could be a guy that could go to, like. Sometimes he be doing it in the real games, too. Like, no, he do. Time. He do. But it's so iffy with them. That's why I went to the That Timberwolves makes, game, he was spazzing. He had, like, eight, uh, four threes in, like, the first half. I want to see them make all those moves so all these guys could just move up the chart, the depth chart. Well, that's Who else do I want to see? All the awards. He man. was in. Was Delano Baden part of that Drew Holiday trade? That's how he got to Portland. Yeah. Yes. Okay. I was, uh, my answer for Celtic. this question is Car Anthony Towns. You just now starting to become a fan. I don't. I don't use the word fan very lightly. I've always liked watching him play, but like now watching what he's doing with the Knicks is pretty fucking fun. Was, you late? Yeah. <laughs> You late as hell. Yeah. Hey, he ain't knowing about Car Anthony Towns. <laughs> he wasn't watching basketball. He thought Car Anthony Towns was weak. <laughs> hell no. He just discovered who Car Anthony Towns is. <laughs> He's probably just like, I've never seen a big man that can shoot like that. He this. is too busy For watching real. Rudy when he was in Minnesota. Oh, hell no. Hell no, man. Hey, get your shit together, bro. Matter of fact, I'm going to tell you about somebody else, too. Is this dude that played for the Barracks? His name Kyrie Irving. <laughs> 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 he got game, bro. He got, he got game. You know you how know, Cat can dribble? He do it even a little. He do it way better. You know who John Moran is? <laughs> Murray State, twelve game. Hollows free. Yeah, I was about to say he's the one who coined his free to know how Hollows. <laughs> 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 I'm fucking around. Make me a shirt that says "Free" to see how I follow those videos. <laughs> <laughs> that bro, that's just the craziest thing to say to somebody, especially on Twitter. Wait, especially do we, when you NBA. Do we have anything NBA? I wrote <laughs> <written> <laughs> something down. <laughs> oh, let me. Let's do one more thing on KB. Uh, we also got the league pass ranking too. Awards, yeah. Mm-hmm. More players who deserve opportunities. We're calling this the EP. Award because Alfred Payton had 14, 21, and 7 last night. And it just made me think of all the guys that ain't in the league no more. That'd be like, who made you sit around and think about, like, man, why this dude? Me and you used to always say that about Marshawn Brooks. So I was writing Marshawn Brooks down, and then I realized Marshawn Brooks is the same age as DeAndre Jordan. I'm going to cry. <laughs> really? <laughs> I didn't know that. <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. How old is DeAndre Jordan now? Like 36. 30, 36. Marshawn Brooks is 36? <laughs> I, I don't know why I thought Marshawn Brooks was my age. I, yeah, I thought he had to be at least like maybe third, around 30. Derek, please answer this question. Because I'm going to fucking cry. He's going to say Dwight Howard. He's going to say Boogie. He's going to say Boogie. He's 35 years he's old. Boogie. But he about to, January is his birthday, so he's about to be 36. He's really 36. That's uh, insane. Right? Don't it feel like Marshawn Brooks is fucking 29? Yeah, because how old is Dylan Brooks? 20, <laughs> probably 29, right? Yeah. Damn, so Dylan Brooks, they were that He was 2011 age? draft class, so it sounds about right, He though. was 2011 draft <laughs> class? Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah. Bro, we old, bro, because I swear it don't feel like Dylan it was Brooks that long is ago. 29. He's about to be 29 in January as well. That's crazy. So they see D. Brooks' January birthday. They damn sure got that uh, <laughs> trade wrong. Holy shit, but yeah, who your player? 
Let's give him. Let's give Emmanuel Moody another run, bro. He's on my list. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I thought you were finna say T.J. Warren. <laughs> no. Uh, give me Rondé Hollis Jefferson, aka okay. African Kobe. I would like to see it. I just don't know. Well, you know, we get an expansion team in a couple years, make the league even more deep. It'll we, happen. We He'll be thirty six by then. <laughs> we gotta need that shit now. I agree. But one in uh, Naperville, bro. You got. You. What about Ola, <laughs> what about Oladipo? I mean, I don't think his body's gonna let him. He's doing ESPN segments now. I, I just all the guys you say, Victor Oladipo. So not Tremont Waters, not um, Dennis Smith Jr. Yes, well, Dennis Smith Jr. had a very good season. How about Marco Markel Fultz? Fultz. <laughs> yeah, oh, Marco yeah. Fultz could definitely come. <laughs> he dead ass is out of the league right now. And it's not. I don't think he has yeah, anything to do It's just the market. He, that they, is a wild ass line thing. To say. The I guess he doesn't want to take less money than what he feels. No, like he wants to play. There's no way. If there's a contract <laughs> on the table, his hey, agent is not saying sit dearly, out for you. I love you. I love you dearly, boy. You be saying some crazy ass shit sometimes. You think he turned down a three million dollar deal to not play at all? Hell no. I sit out <laughs> and never play again before I take three million dollars. <laughs> Because Lord knows I've been on a max contract, so that little shit offends me. <laughs> I think he'll jump through fire to get to a $3 million contract right now. You know how they had to run on a hot blazing stones? Yeah. I think he would do that to get a $3 million. If, I, if a $3 million contract was on the other end of that, I think he would do that. I did something similar to that on my honeymoon. For real? Yeah, like like the, the hot stones walk through. What's the technique? Walk, motherfucker. Oh, I thought it was like... You can't <laughs> walk too fast or something like that. Cause oh, no, nah, they didn't have it. No, technique. you can't walk too slow. It was just too slow. get through It's some technique it wasn't, so it you wasn't don't burn really your feet though. as hard. It wasn't bad at all. You can't walk too slow? Yeah, if you walk too slow, then the heat, it'll start burning. It'll burn your feet. Ain't, but I thought I, if you I'm, walk I'm, too I'm, fast, too, then it's I was like, saying that sarcastically because ain't there like no shit? Oh, well, he was saying <laughs> you can't walk too slow. Don't walk too, don't walk too slow. Don't stand on a hot coal. It's going to burn you. All right, let's do some league pass rankings, y'all. Uh, we've got... Anywhere between 15 to 18 games played for every team, which kind of sounds crazy when you think about it. Um, who we watching is the real question. So I'm going to give y'all the team. Y'all tell me where y'all rank them S to F. Bet. Uh, let's start off with the Miami Heat. I will say I'm not tuning into a lot of Miami games. <laughs> that's why hey, you put Larson in that fair. trade. You ain't know about him. That's fair. I would probably put it at like an F for me. Damn, I'd probably say that's like a C. How, so that's kind of like you have not watched them at all. I haven't. I have probably only watched one or two. Games I was going heat. where you was wow. going, but I haven't been pleased when I have watched. So I'm yeah. gonna go D. That's where I'm at with it. Like I've a watched D. a good amount, but I don't enjoy it. So I would put it probably B. It's starting to get better, but not good enough for me to even say C. If Jamie's got thirty, then it could go towards a C. Yeah, his best game the other night. We didn't even get to really. I didn't watch it because we were all together. Friendsgiving. Doing he had thirty game. in that day. That day too. Yeah. Right? yeah. All right. Next team: New York Knicks. Now, this team, very fun, very exciting to watch. I would probably put this at like a B. They've I mean, been like an A-tier team for me this season, man. <laughs> I can't lie. I've watched what a lot What you that for? Because it sounded like how y'all be talking about the – It sounded like y'all, yeah. That sounded like the reviews where you'd be like, man, this burger is so damn good. <laughs> I can't put it down. It's about a five. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not great. I'm not great. I'm, I'm biased. I would I'm say A-. minus. Yeah, it's been it's been fun to see them. Their offense is enough for me to tune in, even if the defense is a struggle. And the defense being a struggle is kind of lit too. If you're not a fan of the Knicks, because some of these games end up being closer than they should be, and then you can kind of laugh at some stuff. So as a neutral fan, it's been pretty damn fun. Orlando Magic. It's like uh, a, it's another A tier as well. It's just strictly just because Franz has been pretty much carrying this team, and that's been very enjoyable. This is a B minus because it started off. A when Paolo. Yeah. It was an A for me. He too. got hurt, it dipped, and then it went back up. So it's like a fluctuating grade right now. Now when Paolo come back, it's gonna be back in A. Yeah. Maybe even S. All right. Big Paolo guy. Forgot. I put it, I put it like a C plus. It probably was a C before he did that to your Lakers. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's now, a, Paolo definitely I mean not Paolo. Franz has definitely been keeping them afloat. And yeah, once they get Paolo back. I feel like they they are a at least a B uh, at least a B tier team. Boston Celtics. Be hey, honest S-tier. with each other, man. S tier. S tier. Yeah. Wow. I probably put it somewhere in the B. I put what it. What did you say? Boston. Boston Celtics. 
they're they're a great team. It's about yes, yeah, it can it's, be a fun watch, but also it could get kind of monotonous in a way. Boom. Yeah. So because of that, you know, I respect it, but it's probably more like a B. I agree with you on that. Celtics are also decent because I mean, when they play the Cavs, that sh- that shit was a blowout. But it's a lot of games. I'm like, oh, they about to blow the Nets out or whatever. And it's like they didn't blow the Cavs out. They were about 17. I think it ended up being like a four point game or something like that. It's just like they'll be going against the Nets or something like that, and the Nets will hang around the whole game. And it's just yeah. like, them hey, the last Raptors, five minutes, yeah. we got this. Shit. Them yeah. and the Raptors with the OT. Yeah. yeah. Um, who did they just play the other day? Yesterday, where Jalen Merrill hit five threes. In the uh, first they played minutes. against the Clippers last night. Yeah. And then the, oh no, no, that's the Timberwolves game you talking the Timberwolves about. Timberwolves game. Yeah, yeah. The Timberwolves game. That was a good game. Uh, Brown came out hot. Yes, he did. Oh yeah, he did. Yes, he did. That was that was a fun six minutes to watch. Yeah. Where he was just going down court and just and shooting. shooting. <laughs> and I, I was listening to the Timberwolves broadcast because I hate the Celtics broadcast. And Jalen Brown saw the clip and said, hating ass commentators. They really was hating on him as he yeah. was hitting those they shots. Really like, they was. They really that was, was crazy. He shot four from 24 from that spot. I'm right. talking about, that he made, how many of those did he make? Five in a row. Yeah. Five in a row. And they were still like, like, yeah, that was they the was, most. They did was you really see people was like, bro, do you listen to your own commentators or whatever? Or like, have you heard your own commentators? Cause he's yeah. talking about Jalen Brown and the Celtics. Oh, okay. So yeah, he's talking about like, yeah. But you know what? They are. I think they are. I'm warming up to them more. I still don't like the shit. If it's Celtics or other team, 99 percent of the time I'm talking to other team. But sometimes it'll be on NBA TV. You don't get a choice. Yeah. It's like you have to listen to the Celtics. And sometimes I've I've heard Scalabrini say, "Well, they did just give us two calls, so that one makes sense." You know, he's kind of how many. <laughs> How That's many times out minimum. of 100 calls is he saying that? I heard it, it I heard it one time, Michael. I think we were in the, in the Discord maybe a week or two ago watching some ball, and I said, bro, I got to change this broadcast. I cannot listen to this Boston Celtics <laughs> one no more. I don't even really pick a broadcast. You just go to I, I usually yeah, don't I either, go. but sometimes yeah. I will if I if I really notice it. No, I, I am very deliberate about my broadcasts. Whichever one I go to, that's the one I listen to, and then I'm judging it strategically. Like, sometimes it's not. Sometimes I, I flip at halftime. Yeah, True. I mean, there's yeah. some teams. I mean, I feel like your team. You're always like for the Bulls. You're listening to the There's team. no better. I mean, I, when it's a Lakers game, I'm listening to the Lakers broadcast. Yeah, I think your teams. You just have to. You have to be biased towards your team. I believe Adam Amin and Stacey King are like top three, only behind the Knicks and the Brooklyn Nets. What about the Hornets? Yeah, yeah they the Hornets com- in there. King Adam Amin and Stacey King are over <laughs> them, in my personal opinion. For real. That's my biases plan. Yes. Well, you no, well, said, yeah, I will put them above, but I also think they're in the top three. So you taking said, the Knicks or the Nets out? I don't even know who's on the Nets commentary. Eagle? Uh, I, I don't really listen. I'm I'm not even gonna lie. I don't notice when I'm watching Nets games. Maybe always, def- maybe it always defaults to the other team. And then, um, who else is on their broadcast? Sometimes Richard Jefferson. Is that is that um? Fuck! What is her name? Is this about for the Nets, right? For the Nets. Oh, yeah, you're absolutely right. It, it, yes. Ah, what is yeah, her yeah. name? I don't know. I don't know her name, but I, I'm I've looking seen it up. It. I can look it up. I guess. And sometimes, like last night, I was listening to them over the Warriors because I hit the Warriors too. Yeah. And then uh, Spencer Dinwiddie hit his shot, and they he said, "You bet." And then I'm like, he be commentating all of the fucking Liberty games too. Yes, he does. Especially when it was in the playoffs. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Yes, he yes he did. You you know you got your bangs. Mm-hmm. Over with the Knicks. You got to you bet when you're but, watching the. But Brooklyn that's why Nets. I don't really know. I don't really know too many because a lot of the games I watch muted. Because I'm going to have four yeah, on this TV, and I'm going to have mm-hmm. my Knicks on the one. Y'all be talking so damn loud in Discord, and sometimes even a Mike Breen and them be cut down low. Yeah. Hello, Mike? Are you going to give us who the commentators are? This is, this I, I was looking for it, no, it, it, it I see Noah Eagle and Richard Jefferson. I thought you said it was a, a, a woman you were also looking for. Yes. I uh, couldn't find her Sarah name. Sarah Custo. There it is. Oh, yeah, I do see it, yeah. Thanks for that. It's right above Richard Jefferson. I ain't Eagle. Noah Eagle is doing play by play as well. Um, they got Todd Frazier for the Yankees games. Wow. I did not know that. Look at Todd. Boy, got a second career. Yeah. Uh, okay. Next team Cleveland Cavaliers. Uh, the- I would put them in like an A tier. Wait, 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 wait. One more thing. Bob Gibson was doing their, an- their commentating back in the day. He was. The pitcher Bob Gibson for, from 1970. Yes, 1970 to 1972, he was a color annotator for him. Sheesh, that's pretty damn cool. Yeah. Rest in peace, man. Right? Uh, it's uh, called the uh, Mandela Effect, if you didn't know. So I don't know. Okay. Um, I'm going A-tier as well for the Cavaliers. Yeah. 
You know, eight tier. They, they sure. are really good fun. Watch. Um, Didn't we watch them on the stream? Tyler Jerome was cooking. We watched. You wasn't there, I don't think. Did you just call him Tyler Jerome? What did I say? You said, I think you said Tyler Jerome. Oh, is that yeah. his name? I don't even. Is that his full I name? I always call him Tyler. I don't. <laughs> if it is, I'm, I don't know. I'm just talking. <laughs> about watch, watch it be. It's some who. It's Tyreek Jerome. <laughs> like <laughs> damn, I ain't know he was like that. It is no Tyrone Jerome. His legal name is Ty. Oh. Okay. His name is Ty Jeremy Jerome. Wow. B did not practice in today's uh, practice or participate in today's practice and will be out Wednesday due to left knee management. Damn. So they just going to keep sucking. Because they, um, they play the Clippers today, don't they? Oh, no, Wednesday, right? I think they played the Clippers twice already. Yeah, they just they played, already the, played Clippers. the Clippers twice. Oh, they no. played Sunday. They played the Rockies. Rockets. Yeah, 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 they played. The, that's a L. All right, next team, Milwaukee Bucks. Lately, it's been like an S tier. Because Giannis has been on a tear. Like, Giannis has been amazing, bro. Mm -hmm. Even when they were bad, it was still a fun watch. Because even, like, you're trying to figure out what the hell is going on. Why yeah. are they not being great? I'm going to put it at A tier all season long. Because Giannis himself is disgustingly impressive. And then you will get your Damian little moments. Say, you still get some Dame times where he be tap the T so times, what they call it. Yeah. He, who did he game recently? He hit that layup. And he was like, we get that layup. layup. Uh, oh, that, that was, was Rockets. Yeah, that was against the Rockets. Yeah, it was because they missed that uh, that little entry pass oh, yeah, for the entry finish pass or for the game winner. Yeah, it's been it's been cool. Bobby Portis is starting to hit his shots again. Yeah, so he's become more of a viable option. Gary Trent is starting to make shots. Mm -hmm. so. I seen make a lot up. of shots. Mm -hmm. He was one of like the top leaders for mid range jumpers this season too. Bobby Portis. Yeah. Oh, Gian Giannis's mid range stats are crazy oh, yeah. this year Giannis too. He's been knocking that mid range jumper down. Uh, let me see if I can find him. That's really, been really like quick. his bread and butter this year, which is crazy. Um, but it is also very good that he's if that's like a staple and it's going to be consistent, bro. How do, how do you guard him? You can't. How do you guard him at that point? So right now, 64% of his shots are coming at the rim. Makes no sense. Uh, I mean, makes sense because <laughs> that's <laughs> what we know him as. And then 17% of his shots are long mid-rangers. What does he shoot on those? Let's see. Give, you, give, me, a, give me a guess. Long mid-rangers for Giannis. Uh, 47%. 51% Giannis. 65 attempts. Him, Woo! I wanted to give him 50, but I was like, maybe it's a little lower than 50. 51, man. And, yeah, against the Detroit Pistons a couple weeks ago, he had two shots in overtime that yeah. were long mid-ranges. And like, he had a three on the wing. Like, what are you supposed to do? Yeah, it's none of you. You but bag off so he don't dunk on you, and now he just pull up. And he pull up. But even when you bag off, sometimes he still dunk on He'll you. He'll pull up. Yeah. He won't pull out. Congratulations to the Ante Kumpo family. <laughs> Was that his way of announcing they're having a baby? Probably, yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's crazy. All right, so, yeah. Uh, now we get the Indiana Pacers. I ain't gonna lie. Mm -hmm. I, I haven't. They they are an enjoyable watch for me all the time. Mm -hmm. Um, I would probably put it at like a D plus. I'm Hallie probably C minus. I'm going C minus, man. When Halley got a when Halley is having a game, they are like in a C range. But if he if he's having a stinker, the team normally just is just not. The one benefit they have they have been in some close games. Yeah. By default, you're going to tune into that. So I give them a C plus, but I definitely expected more. Yeah, because last year they were must-watch team. They before they the were, season started, I had them in the A tier. Yeah, they were a must-watch team because the offense was so damn good and it was so damn fun. It was up tempo. Back. Obi topping, dunking, uh, dunking stuff. And, yeah, yeah. If you balls, if you were to give a year. if you were to give a casual fan who ain't never watched basketball last year and said, "What team do I watch?" The Pacers would have been at the top of that list because you would have been like, "This team is gonna be fun, up tempo, and they're gonna be a team that probably get you hooked on the basketball." This mm -hmm. year. I can't really say that. I'm not Pacers. showing a new fan Indiana Pacer <laughs> film from this year, bro. No. No way. <laughs> Who would be that team, though, this year? The Cleveland Cavaliers? The Knicks. Okay, see. Okay, the Rockets see. might be a team, too, a sneaky team. Mm. Like They they give you the boast of both, yes. best of both worlds. Yeah, I, the Rockets might be one of those teams where I would give it to a new fan who ain't never watched basketball and be like, this is the team you need to watch, and that'll get you hooked. Because the men and Tari, they, they probably going to show you a little something, something. They're going to have some highlights that you're going to get it. Intrigued by. Mm -hmm. and I, think you, got, I think you need that like end of the game type factor too. Like you with Donovan Mitchell and the Cavs, like you gonna get that close it out like game winner guy, type yeah, shot. Yeah. You just not gonna get at that same level from Houston. I probably could go Steph Curry and the Warriors as well. That's true. Yeah, Steph Curry's always that right. That guy or either Giannis too. He gives you a little different look. Hey, Giannis, yeah. I don't, but I don't want people thinking that the way Giannis hoop is the norm if you've never watched basketball before. Because you're going to yeah. be really disappointed you watch 29. You're going to you have a Shaq master. That's why I'm telling yeah. you to watch, though, because it ain't the norm. Yeah. Because you're going to tune into these other teams, and they just going to jack, 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 jack. Jack up threes. 
Yes. Okay. Uh, Brooklyn Nets. Uh, oh. I had them at D tier before the season started. Yeah. yeah the Brooklyn they're Nets. Probably they're probably like so to, they probably now. like a C close to a B. Honestly. Yeah. They're like a C plus. I'm gonna give them a B. They be even on games while going to the night. Like I ain't gonna watch this. They, they be the, in the Warriors. Game. Last game. night was that. I thought. Yeah. Hey. Yeah, you had that same mindset. Then he look up, he say, Dennis Schroeder got how many? You're right. He got 30? Cam Thomas got how many? And that was with, so. yeah, Cam Thomas got injured in that game. And then he came back. Oh, he did, he came back to the bench. They said he was good to go, but he never checked back in. Because the other guys is what got them out of that deficit. So they just let it ride. And Jordy's been hooping um, as a coach. And, again, we already mentioned the broadcast team. It's a good watch. Next team, we got the Detroit Pistons. They have been. They are also one of those bad teams who are in game. Yeah, they're, they're like, like must watch TV because every game is close. close. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'll give them. A, I'll, I'll, I'll give them a give B them as a B. well. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to put them in the B tier. Yeah, the Bucks game, Giannis gave them the 59. Like, yeah, they both Hornets games. Yeah, it's just the, la- the last night last game night, winner yeah. against the Raptors. It's just the way they play hoop- hoops. Chicago Bulls can't watch them. Yeah, Literally so can't the watch. F- them. Because I yeah. literally can't unless, <laughs> unless oh, I do something. Or oh, I go buy an antenna. Yeah. And you know, I can only watch them in my office because only I'm not buying an antenna for every TV in my house. Who's the, the most bull. exciting bull for you as a fan? Oh, Zach Levine is incredible. Trade for him, please. <laughs> I also love it like when Modest Buzella steps on the court at all. Yeah, man. He had 14 in the first half the other day. I was like, oh, my God, he's having a breakout game. Yeah. Then he went 0 for 6 after that. He had one dunk. I don't know if it was last game or the game before that, but it's just like he did one of them dunks where you got it. He moved out the way because there was a shot blocker trying to block it. And it was just like, how do you finish that? Yeah. Get him more minutes by trading. True. The True. other guys. All right, next team, Atlanta Hawks. We can kind of breeze through these not so great teams. I would give them a C. They cool. I'm giving like a D plus. And the only reason it's not lower than that is because Dyson Daniels is fun. Yeah, that's kind of I think Jalen Johnson and Dyson Daniels have all both been very fun to watch. They have, yeah, they have to get a D. I'm not even going to sit up here in front. I like e. the Hawks. I thought they'd be higher, but, I mean, it's just. They be disappointed, too. They sometimes have matched up, and you think you're about to get a good game. And What was that game? We was in a Discord. We was like, this game going to be decent. Was that the Kings game? Hawks versus Kings or something? It was like a week ago. But Oh, that was when I was like, I cannot wait for this game to happen. And it was yeah. Atlanta versus somebody, and it ended up being a dud. I think it was the Kings. So uh, yeah, it feels like I think it was the Kings. All yeah. of my games I can't wait for NW and Dudge. Knicks versus Denver Nuggets. Nuggets. I'm like, that's this is my game. I don't care about the other ones. <laughs> the, the, Shit was I was over so in the first disappointed minute. in them. Bro. Yeah. I hate when the game where you like this is must watch TV is over. Because in my mind, sometimes I'd be like, I'm gonna make a video about this game. Yeah. It gotta be good. So I'll just turn off all the other ones. No quad box, no duo box. This is the game I'm watching. And the shit was a blo- I was back on Bellatro by the second quarter. The the Kings versus Thunder game. Also kind of disappointing because D- Lou Dort just had Aaron Fox in jail. He had like two points, and all, and he was the only thing the commentators talked about. That's yeah. how good the defense was, mm-hmm. and it was fucking phenomenal. I'm gonna call that I'm gonna call that a rarity because most of the times the Kings is much watch TV. All yeah. of their games going down to end. It's the late game, boy. <laughs> yeah. That should be having me. It's a good way to end the night. Yeah. yeah. No, yeah. They they games are normally good, but last night it was just like dumb versus the Clippers. Would be a lot better. Uh, Charlotte Hornets. Lamelo's been playing so it's damn really just Lamelo and Brandon Lamello. Miller's. You're you're yeah. tuning in for everything else stinks. Diabate, he be he f- he's, he's fun he's to fun. watch he's, rebound the ball. Yes, because yeah. that's the only thing he goes. He's through. one of the Dennis Rodman dudes where it feel like he know exactly where the ball is bouncing off the rim. I'll and give everything. a C plus. Yeah, I'm gonna go B plus. Uh, Toronto Raptors, C plus as well. I think they do have the close games, but like I don't know, it's it's just cool to watch. I go like D plus. Especially because they haven't been able to really been healthy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's also kind of why we have a C plus. I think when they're fully healthy, this could go up to like the B tier. But as of right now, they just been like a good C plus team. I'm gonna go with a C. Philadelphia 76ers. D F. plus. Oh yeah, yeah, maybe. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna go with C because I like seeing them kind of in this moment, or like I like the controversy that comes with them right now. I'm gonna go. I do B, watch D minus because I forget that fast. Jerry McCain. <laughs> yeah, he's enough oh, to he's oh, raise yeah, a grade yeah, a little right. bit. It should be an F. It should That's be a F. crazy sentence, but I understand what he said. He said, I do watch with that hater mindset. <laughs> <laughs> he said that? Yeah. I did. I'd just be like, damn, y'all lost again? <laughs> More work for you to do. Damn. <laughs> That's crazy. Damn. Because like, they're not supposed to be here, so it's like, it's like, 
How much more of a hole can you dig yourself in before the team panics? When a team start off slow and you can just see the body language is just not what it's supposed to be. You just like, yeah, it's one of them days. Joel yeah. Embiid talking about he feel like his number hate on him all the time. Mm-hmm. Washington Wizards. F. D minus. Give me some highlights, please. They're, I don't, I don't tune into F, Wizards but games anymore. They do anymore. have some D moments. Early no, I watched the whole game against the Celtics the other night. That was a good one. But oh, other yeah. than that, it's kind of hit or miss. Yeah. Definitely a team that I'm going to fall I out if, of completely. I wonder if they're going to be a team like that where they just play the Celtics good all, all year because that's two times now. Possible. The, I mean, the Celtics probably just don't get up for that game. Absolutely. <laughs> all right, Western Conference, OKC Thunder. I, I got them S tier. Yeah. S tier. Maybe my only S tier. Shout out to iHeart, man. Oh, yeah. He's been he's been back and he's been so damn. I like the passing is Let me not crazy. say that. Mm-hmm. Can we add Alex Caruso to the he just trying to struggle to start the beginning of the season? Mm-hmm. That shot got to come up. At I least a little bit. He shot it so damn good with Chicago. Maybe he's just back to where he normally is. But yeah. He's shooting that shit so Which is bad. Because that means that we didn't sell high. He had a yeah. career year and we end up with Josh Giddy. Yeah, no, no draft picks. Ah, fuck. S tier OKC. Shout out to Ashay Gibbs Alexander and them. Um, Golden State Warriors. Also an S tier for me. Yeah. I don't know if I've missed a game on the Warriors this year. Because, like, Steph Curry, Buddy Hill shooting is going to draw you in immediately. They just play a fun brand of basketball. It's free-flowing. It's Steph Curry. Draymond's defensive um, impact is so great as well. It's must-watch TV, and it pretty much has been must-watch TV for, like, a decade now. Mm -hmm. Uh, More than a decade at this point. It's going to be crazy when it's... Don't say Don, it. Don? Don't say yeah. it. It ain't happening. It's literally not happening. Hey, man. I mean, Steph Curry hasn't fallen off. So, right, it, 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 but when it does <laughs> happen, somebody else gonna be must see TV. Yeah. Probably gonna be like, I hope so. Doubles. Yeah, I don't know. Jared McCain and Steph Curry. He do play like him. <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> Houston Why? Rockets. Why? He do play like him a little bit. No, nah, he do. Houston I don't Rockets want to take that literal. Yeah. <laughs> Houston Rockets. Oh yeah, that's an S tier. Yeah, S tier. They've been S tier all year. I got him in A as well. Um, Lakers. This is A A tier. You know, damn well it's an A tier, man. Oh, you're not putting it in an S? I wouldn't put it as an S because there's obviously some problems they got, but it's like. Not everything got problems, though. I mean, Anthony Davis is playing at a hell of a, like, hell of a level this season. LeBron is still at 40 doing his thing. And we even get some of the young guys like Dalton going for 30. So they can't even count as a league pass team because every game is on national yeah, TV. They really can't. Every yeah. game. Uh, Memphis Grizzlies. It's got to be like a B yeah. plus. A minus. Yeah. yeah. That's what I, I was think with. they could be. I, 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 I got them at A. But I think they can go higher like, even, once they, even once when they, they get healthy, healthy, then it's like a legit A. But even when they weren't healthy, they were still winning games. So like, that's, I'm talking, but yeah, the double. excitement level dips a little bit when you don't have the jaw because I can't anticipate the Scottie Pippen triple double or thirty point game. Marcus Smart is not winning that starting job back, by the way. And you talking about he, over Scotty? And he sounds okay with no, that. No, over um, Jalen Wells. Wells. And, he's oh. okay, and Marcus Smart's okay with that until he's not. Bro, he looks so. <laughs> maybe it's that haircut he got, but he looked just weird. He looked different than he Marcus was. Marcus Smart, absolutely, yeah. the haircut, absolutely. He also just not very good anymore. It looked like, I which guess. is crazy because he's not that old. But he hasn't really been like on the floor consistently. I think that's part of the problem. Yeah, L.A. Clippers. Hey, I ain't I gonna lie. This, it it's a like a B plus. It's an A for me. It's a I'll B+. give it a B minus. James Harden still getting it done. Yes. I somehow like watching this team more than like when it was Kawhi and Paul George. Can't lie to you. Y'all was calling me crazy at the beginning of the year. Yeah, I was. <laughs> I didn't think this team <laughs> I didn't think this team would be that exciting. I kind of forgot who KD was. That's why. My fault, KD. It's Talking really, about Chris Dunn. Yeah, Chris the KD. Talking about Chris Dunn. Yeah, the, the KD, KD is crazy. Yeah, um, kind of forgot about him. You ain't know who Zubat was, though. No, I didn't. Okay. Even though he played for my team. Briefly. He did. Briefly. Nobody saw that. Nobody. You still like it, Mike Muscala over there? <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> no, nah, but I like that ring we got. Damn. They sent me my. They sent me mine the other day. Damn. It just got to me. I was about to say that's a little <laughs> bit late, brother. You know the COVID had it delayed a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> that, the, uh, the parade is what next week. Yeah. God. I remember when yeah. Danny Green got his ring. Oh no! Somebody got their ring super late just because Otto Porter for the Warriors. Oh, for the Warriors. Remember he got his ring super late just because he was hurt and like he was, and then he ended up getting there a few years later. Damn, a few years later. A few years, I know that was Matt Barnes for sure. Didn't Matt Barnes just leave it? He didn't even want it. And then he went one day and it was like here. 
he let his sons be Man, a if part I play of it. one minute for a championship team, give me my ring, bro. I don't care. Not even play. I was in a locker room one time. All right, because at the end of the day, you, it, if anything, you could just sell it. If anything. If anything. Yeah. All right, we got a few more teams. Phoenix Suns. Uh-huh. It was so good to start yeah, off. Yeah, so they, they conflict. I'm going to go see. I'm going to go see. It's about to come yes, back, though. See. Kevin Durant's back tonight. Yeah, yeah Bradley Beal comes back as well. Mm-hmm. So it's definitely about to jump back. It's going to go back. Yeah, it's going back to A. Things fell down once Kevin Durant went. As soon as Kevin Durant went down, things started going bad. Who would have thought? You lose a great player, your team's no longer great. They had another great player. <laughs> Kevin Booker. <laughs> yeah. It just couldn't do it, I guess. Uh, one Can't one do it by yourself. Player, not a lot of good players. They barely have shit when they all are there, so you take yeah. away two. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the defense has been so bad without those two. It's kind of crazy. Denver Nuggets. S tier. B. I'm going to go A. I'm going to go A. I feel like this run Jokic has been on has just been – like they are must-watch TV. It like, took the sting away from me when his – I hate that, when I have to fair. say shit like this, but he was having a baby. I didn't know he was having a kid. Yeah. Well, other than that, it's still it's been pretty consistent from him. Jokic is the reason you tune into these. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, and, and Russell Westbrook now. Who oh, yeah. Who would have yeah. thought in 2024, Russell Westbrook <laughs> would be a having a better. That's a few games in a row with Bro- Brody, they boy. It's crazy to say that Russell Westbrook has been having a better season than Jamal Murray. Even yes, last that night. That doesn't even. We had a comfortable lead, but Brody was going, and I. Re-engage, like, hold up, don't do this. <laughs> like, don't let them. Bro, that's been my favorite Russell's when they need him to kind of carry the load when Jokic is on the bench or something like that. That's been my favorite He Russell. was like dogging all Lakers. Lakers. Yeah. In threes, talking shit to the fans. Why are they still booing him? Tip dunk. So, Anthony Davis, such a soft ass. Because that was just such a salty chapter for Laker fans that I think that they always just going to hold that against him. Y'all tried to ruin his career. <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> hey. Edit this and put a picture of his family up right now. That's the man. <laughs> <laughs> Dallas Mavericks. Uh, I would put it at like a B plus, B minus maybe. Uh, I would go B minus as well. I, would, I was going B. I'm, Kyrie's I'll be, been enough to keep me engaged. I'll be a follower. Yeah. I was Peter and C, but I'll go B. I'll, I want, is there a time frame on Luca? I know he's, I, last time I saw was that he will miss time. They never gave us an update. I'm not sure. But hopefully he's back. I want to back. assume it's too long with the wrist injury. I don't, it's, it's I don't know if crazy. it was a shooting hand. Uh, I'm not know. sure. Okay. If it's a shooting hand, then I don't, you literally don't know. Yeah. Uh, go, nope. San Antonio Spurs. B. Vic, Vic makes it, yeah. Vic. Go B. What about player of the week, Harrison Barnes? <laughs> True. It First is his shooting hand, KB. <laughs> is that crazy? First time ever. Oh, career. man. I guess Harrison. you can always continue to get better. He also an award getter for not swinging that ball. I don't blame him. He, he don't think about it. Paul. Yeah. He plays Fuck, I very similar to Tobias Harris when you think about it. He does. It. They yeah. have, like, very damn near identical games. Yeah, Chris Paul is enough to keep me engaged, and then Wimbyama's also on the team. I Chris, like pa- Ste- Chris Paul Cass. is so damn good still, man. He is. He ain't top 10 in the league good. He's not even top 15. He might not even be top 20 in the league good. But, boy, is he a floor riser, man. Mm-hmm. Yeah, people not. just got to be patient. Definitely Some people up here 20. was just talking about how bad he was to start the year. They weren't giving him a chance. Yeah. yeah, you had raised that uh that question to us about like could this start to kind of be the norm with uh, a lot of these older players that we see that are still just effective. You know, once it used to be like once players got to around like past thirty five, mm-hmm. they was on the last years that they they kind of like they days. But this it feels like we still get players that are just effective you around past thirty five. To I asked that question months ago. Mm-hmm. You yeah. just you said it like I said it four minutes ago. No, <laughs> no, but. I mean, I Chris Paul, norm. last year, Chris Paul, he still was like a good piece of that he Warriors good, yeah. second unit. So, mm-hmm. like, but the, he the showed thing, us that he could still hoop. The thing I was asking is, how old is Chris Paul? 38. How old is Steph Curry? 36. 36. He, yeah, he's not too far behind. I'm talking about the Steph Currys, where mm-hmm. they're playing at that level at 36. I love to see the Chris Pauls, too. I'm sorry, Chris Paul is 39 and a half. But to be 36 Also, oh, he turned still, 40 like, this year? Last year, I heard when he was like, they said he just turned 35 or whatever. I was like... He that old? Exactly. Don't feel it. Because he's like, he playing like he's 29 right now. Yeah, oh, Look not, at this man's page, bro. It's all. It, it didn't add up. My fucking goat. I had a dream a, like a week ago. I had a dream. And you remember I was telling y'all I had a dream. We was arguing on this podcast in my dream. And dream me made a great fucking point that I want to bring onto the show. <clears throat> not talking ceilings. Not talking peaks. Just talking day-to-day in their NBA careers. 
There's only two players, two point guards I'm taking over Chris Paul. That's Magic and that's Steph Curry. What's wrong with that? Because people going to say otherwise. Oh, well, that's people. I didn't say it was going to be y'all. <laughs> people should say otherwise. Yeah. But I, that's just what Dreamy was in that bitch cooking. Because I'm thinking about like, okay, we could go random game at 26 years old. What other point guard is making all NBAs other than Steph Curry and Magic Johnson? Probably John Stockton. Don't mess with him anyway, so we don't talk about it. It's really day to day. It's Russell too. Not day to day. Peaks. I can't argue against the Russell. Day to day Russ. is crazy. Not day to day. Day to day is trying to slim off a lot of. Fat. Not day to day. It's a conversation about greatness and longevity. We should have known day. that when he said not peak. <laughs> day to day, because I was gonna say uh, day to day. Hey, and a fantastic. Russell Westbrook game backfield. today is probably better than the a fantastic game from Chris Paul, I would say. Say what again? I'm sorry. A big game, like, in a way, Russell's ceiling for what he can have for a big game, I think is bigger than Chris Paul at this today, point. Today, yeah. Yeah, I can't, hey, I cannot argue that. Because Russ still is extremely athletic. He's he might not be as consistent hell. as a Chris Paul, but when he does Booyah. snap off. That's part of a consistency he's gonna have a game. and longevity. And today? Yeah. Who would you rather have on your second? Or who, who would you rather have as your point guard today? Chris there's, Paul. Ne, there's never going to be a day in a week where I'd rather have Russell Westbrook because the point guard is supposed to do certain things. But I think today, today, with Chris Paul on the Spurs, I'm going Chris Paul. Because yeah. but nothing if, is going to hit like the 19 and 11 with three threes. But like, if you the Nuggets, who would you rather have coming off your bench? Your Brody point. does what they need him exactly. to do. Uh, yeah, that, yeah, it depends on the team. Today, but that's mm-hmm. why I'm saying like they already have a Jokic who's going to run a lot, a lot of the shit going. So you just, but like when you're talking about const- running an offense and being a point guard, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm always going to go Chris Paul. Yeah. But you give me the Thunder, and we got to do more than just running the offense. You got to be the heartbeat. You got to energize us. You got to hit the half court shot against Denver to get us in the playoff. Oh no, bro! I give me, give me. I Russell ain't never Westbrook. seen Russell Westbrook snitch to get free throws, bro. That's a winner to me. He didn't have to snitch to get free throws. He was going to tear that rim down. Oh, it true. didn't matter if the, the ref called that whistle I forgot. Or not. He was going to get to the light. He just wasn't going to make them bitches. <laughs> hey, he been. I'm just trolling. I love I was going to say, man. I forgot before he got to the Lakers, like, he's been a, always a decent free throw shooter. Yeah, he kind of just fell off later yeah. in his career, but he's always yeah. been good at it. That's why you got to throw in all the other stuff. <laughs> Russell Westbrook. When he Only was other person you can have an argument for, in my opinion. I mean, you can argue anybody, but uh, Zeke has yet Thomas. Yeah. Hey, we, but he we also got about the ankle Zeke. stuff. So Zeke, his, Jason Kidd can have an argument. Nope. Steve Nash can have an argument. Not post back injury. Nope. You know, well, that was a lot of. He was old as hell. It was a lot of basketball Chris before Paul's the Thirty nine. I'm saying Chris, uh, Steve Nash was old as hell. Remember, he had them extra minors though. Because man, nah, actually, nah, nah, I was wait, gonna wait. make a bad joke. What? I was Say gonna it. make a bad. At joke. least he understands it was gonna be a oh, bad okay. joke. I was gonna, never mind. Y'all uh, funny. Minnesota, just head on. <laughs> Never mind, <laughs> Minnesota Timberwolves. Because I was finna keep ecking him on to say it, but let's not say it if you think it's gonna be. I put it probably like a, a B. When they B started plus. out, they was like a B. I, I ain't gonna lie. I haven't been really. This much has been interested. the most disappointing team in the league. What are they? Eight and eight? Oh uh, well, no, 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 no. The, 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 the 76ers. 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 Without but they're a doubt, right, but they're right they're there. They're, right, they're number two. Okay. We got to stop. <laughs> there's, there's a gap between one yeah, and two. We got to stop this shit in, our, in, in the generation right now. We just it's okay to, Yeah, we just okay to say they've been disappointed. Yeah. It, it's always just a need to just say the most. I, I accidentally said most, the most without thinking fun, about though. the Sixers. But I said the greatest draft class ever. Mm. Yeah, DJ Ed Cummins basically Michael Jordan. Without the jump shooting, the defense, all that stuff. The height. Or the ball hit. Or the ball hit. The swag. Uh, <laughs> Mid-range jump shot. Kings. We only got a few more. Kings. A. Uh, I would put them in a B plus. B plus. B plus feels right for me. All the close games, and then we got the De'Aaron Fox moments. Give me an A. I, I'm, I'm a little worried about them right now as we speak. They've also been a little disappointed. They've been 10. worried about them the whole time. The moment they got DeMar DeRozan, this is the, po- the question I pose. They, they, there's still a chance that this team won't make the play. I was on, I was on a Reddit page not too long ago, and people was calling for Mike Brown here. They are, yeah. Not, I saw that on Twitter too. Mm-hmm. Like they saw, they it was like a four game stretch. It was like Atlanta, a couple losses. And like there's no coach loses this game. Like it's so crazy how the pendulum swings when it comes to coaching. Because one year I was you're the coach of the year. 
That yeah. shit since sliced bread. And he, a lot of people were yeah. saying, uh, give like, him a statue. Now he has like even the Keon Ellis shit to start the season is kind of crazy to me. I ain't gonna lie to you. We uh, we came on here and we talked about Keon Ellis being the starter like he told us. Yeah. <laughs> Seriously, if you go back and watch, I think you were saying Kevin Hurd, and we looked at you like he was crazy. Did I? I believe so. Somebody uh, put Kevin Hurd in the lineup. We was like, hell no, it's going to be Keon. You would think we had conversations with Mike Brown. I remember I did the Warriors where I said Wiggins would be starting at the Yeah, two. that yeah, one. Yeah, like, that one. And yeah. then it actually turns out that was actually great for the Warriors. They yeah, starting at the three with the Anthony Melton and Steph Curry. Oh. Kamingo was the one going off the bench. Yeah. Portland Trailblazers. Uh, I fake like watching the Portland Trailblazers, bro. Yeah, they had a games where right they now, are very fun right to now, watch. Yeah. Yeah, I don't yeah. know how long term it's going to yeah, be. Yeah, right now it's been like a B minus, C plus type range. To start the season, I wasn't there. No. Uh, and and that was Shane Sharp being back. My it has gone up for me. Yes. Um, so, Shane Sharp he's back. back. Donovan, Donovan Klingon getting hoping. minutes. No Robert eight, Williams, yeah. I, I like when I see Robert Williams. So, yeah. so you're saying just no Aiden makes you want to watch more. Yeah, I would say that. <laughs> if I'm but being it's more so sh- with you. shade and sharp, but yeah. I yeah. But I think it's just because I like Donovan Klingon, though. Aiden it's like was my Aiden money stairs, maker. Like, Ten and a half. Hey, locked it every yeah. fucking night. He locked it. One thing he going to do, he going to rebound that damn ball. No. That, wasn't always, that wasn't always the case, right? Weren't we, we on this podcast years ago saying No, we just called him soft, but he would, he would rebound, though. He'll okay. take a, yeah. call him soft because he'll take rebound? a— I feel like it's somebody we used to really— Well, I know we used Jackson. Jaron Jackson, Lopez. Um, I can't think of anybody else. It's be on Anthony Davis says about rebounding. Yes, yeah, yes. And now he's doing on the top of the league. Talking about Josh, who's, who's averaging more per game? Him with Josh Hart this year. Josh Hart supposed Anthony to Davis. rebound him. Ain't that what you said? <laughs> yes, he did. Should beat your ass. What the man. fuck was your argument then? I don't know. I, I think it was just more so like when Josh Hart checked to the game, he wasn't doing nothing but scrapping on the floor. Like Anthony Davis was doing a lot. That more. still makes no sense, right? No, nah, it's not a good <laughs> argument. Even two years later, <laughs> oh, you well, had two years so, to think of a good argument. You could so do one. <laughs> now what? Because who the better rebounder now? You got it. Yeah, okay. hey, so you can't steal my shit when I'm talking to you. So so, so <laughs> is just is the, the best response for gift to something, bro. On, on everything. So, so. and <laughs> our last two teams, Utah Jazz. Because uh, it only affects you if you let it affect you. <laughs> no, facts. I'll go D minus. Oh, uh, uh, you being generous, brother. Motherfucker on Twitter. Swear they got you cornered. <laughs> <laughs> Swear. How did you put them there when two episodes ago you did this? So <laughs> that conversation ends. But who was the team? You said the Jazz. 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 I probably go about F man. I ain't gonna cap. Yeah, I just I ain't gonna cap man. It I'm has not, not been a Jazz in. game. I've been interested to tune into this year. I do like Kyle Filipowski though. I can't. I can't say that's wrong because I don't plus. know. That plus. <laughs> he did help me win some money once. So shout out to him. And lastly, the New Orleans Pelicans. I will say I watched their games a little bit more. Than the Utah Jazz? Yeah. I agree with that. Hey, Trey, the third is averaging 18 points. CJ McCollum play, and then DeJounte comes back tomorrow, right? Yes. So hopefully they get uh, trending in the right direction. It's really just without Z right now. Oh, I guess B.I. didn't play last night. Trey Murphy tweaked his ankle last night. I don't know how much that's going to affect him tomorrow. See, I didn't it sounds like an every other day thing. Yeah. For them. But as long as Alfred Payton is the point guard, I'll be tuned in. Well, he won't be. No, no, no. He'll be starting. He's starting. I ain't never seen DeJounte Murray do what he did yesterday. <laughs> no, DeJounte definitely no, did have some of his games. <laughs> I'm just talking. No, that's crazy. Unless they just work DeJounte in and have him come off the bench. Yeah, no. I as long as Alfred Payton play, man, I don't know. The NBA is so crazy. His ass might get waved in a week. That's, yeah. It's possible. But just crazy. He just had 20 assists. Yeah, 20 but maybe assists. somebody will look at that and say, come play with us. Yeah, somebody overseas, maybe. That's so <laughs> crazy, bro, because... He was really he been hooping, bro. Oh no, yeah, he played. Stance. He played like Whip was do. Warriors upcoming nine games: Thunder, Suns, Nuggets, Rockets, Timberwolves, Timberwolves, Grizzlies, Timberwolves, Pacers. That's tough. Six and two. Oh yeah, they are gonna go through this rough. They yeah, they had nine a cake. Go There's a tie in there. Boy, yo, it's crazy. Cause um, they went through us. They went through their easy stretch, mm-hmm. and then November was supposed to be the. Then the November and the December was supposed to be like they tough, real hard stretch. So, no. yeah, they about to come down to earth real fast. I think you hate a hard stretch, real fast. Yeah. Is what last, those last two games are really bad, man. Those are ones you need for yeah. this stretch to come up. So, like, well, I'm gonna look at Minnesota stretch, like, because Minnesota can capitalize on something like this. 
I think Minnesota got a gauntlet too, unless I'm thinking about somebody else. So they play the Rockets, they play the Kings. It's not too uh, bad. They play the Bulls. Oh, okay. Never mind. They got the opposite of a gauntlet. Oh, no. What am I looking at? They play the Rockets, the Kings, the Clippers, the Lakers, the Clippers, the Warriors, the Warriors, obviously, the Knicks. And they play the Timberwolves again. It's a mismatch. I mean, they play the Warriors again. <laughs> I was going to say they play I mean, the Warriors. <laughs> they play the Warriors three times in a span of a few days. That is crazy. So it's like, it's not a gauntlet. It's also not easy either. Yeah. Somewhere in the middle. Okay. I would hate to play a team three times in like two weeks. For real? Is this a playoff series? <laughs> <laughs> That's uh, that's 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 <laughs> this wraps on the bro. I just saw a tweet. So Derek tweeted yesterday. Um, so I'm sorry. The numbers on the board podcast tweeted a bunch of fits from Derek. Derek Miller by Mills Fashion went very well. Two thousand likes. Somebody said if you saw D Mills in 2017, you wouldn't believe he put this shit on. D Mills quoted and said, "I definitely was putting that shit on back in 2017." I replied to it with that picture of him, I'm allergic to stupid people, Brian Griffin shirt. <laughs> and a quote tweet that's in my mentions right now that said, I had this exact shirt back in middle school. <laughs> <laughs> and Derek was like 24 years old wearing this shirt. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. I dead ass tried to find this shirt to wear it on the podcast. You, you can't, can't find, find it. it. It's damn near like a vintage item now. Really? If you look and it I up, know it you says don't have it no more. 20, no, it says 2011 so. uh, Family Guy allergic to stupid people shirt like it has the if anybody tracking the year something drop yeah. it's kind of like a hot commodity <laughs> so you know oh uh, you probably, can't you couldn't find the exact one i can't find the exact it might one be at my mom's house might he be gonna, gonna bring it's it like out. sell it, it for 1.2 million dollars <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, it might know. be one of those items that i just like left in my room over there she got it hanging on the wall to m- remember you by <laughs> do you ever think about that when you see like a uh, like you go to a vintage shop or like a something like that where it's secondhand and you see like just a basic ass shirt, but it's probably old as hell. And mm-hmm. you, that's probably why I'd be there because you just can't find it no more. Yeah, yeah. But you be making fun of shit like that. Who? Because I wore that shirt from 1988 and you. Was oh, the about one the with collar. the holes in it. Well, I do got one of those too. But you was talking about the collar. <laughs> oh, the collar. Yeah. Yeah. It's like I, I enjoy picking up. You know, up some there's a way you can fix that, right? Yeah, I I saw a TikTok about it not too long ago. I don't care enough to do it. Honestly. Yeah. I think I seen the literally the exact same TikTok, but it also looked like it was too much to do. I just wear it in the house. <laughs> I wear that shirt in the house. It do be some, a lot of times it's like here's a hack to do this. And the hack is so much work that it's not even really considered a hack anymore. It's like what the what are we doing? It's not even worth doing it. Yeah. Or I see a lot of those where it's like they're trying to be innovative and they'll have like it's like they'll try to they'll take like a little um they have like a bunch of food or whatever and they'll try to create like about like a small storage space or whatever mm-hmm. and they'll do so much extra stuff it's like bro just put the boxes in there and he would have been just as cool yeah um what about friendsgiving y'all enjoy yourselves I had a hell, I had a hell of a good time no yeah the food was amazing Baz was amazing the time I had was was not the typical time for some reason this one hit a little different. A, it was a real good time, I mean, like, I guess we just don't be seeing each other as much. I think that picture is dope as hell, too. Yeah, it was. The yeah, pictures turned out. I just really wish, I'm re- I really just wish Tyler was there. Because we was in a party yesterday, and I was like, damn, man, feel good. That's mine. How you touch a shit, man? Oh, okay, <laughs> shit, man. They was talking about 2K <laughs> yesterday, because, like, we were on the Discord. And Tyler Trust was me, I ain't forgetting about Tyler that. was trying to talk a little trash in the Discord about 2K, and I wanted to say like, he don't even got that? 2K, but I ain't want to go. I ain't want to go go there with Tyler because you know, obviously, if he could, he would. Right, for sure. But yeah, man, I had a really good time. He could. He just don't want to. Do you think so? The military not paying him enough to buy a sixty dollar game, and it's gonna be Black Friday, twenty nine dollars. He said right? he don't got time. Twenty nine. Okay, that's yeah, that's what different would, then. What would make Black Friday make 2K? 40 or something. But I don't know. We just, we all getting so much older. And then we had the announcements. Um, had the Friendsgiving. John is crazy. One of the homies, John, um, is about to have a baby. And he ain't tell nobody. So you walk in and just chilling. And I hear some chatter. Like, huh? John said, oh, yeah. P, read my shirt. Look at his shirt. He say, I, I put a turkey in her oven. <laughs> <laughs> I say, what? I say, oh, hell no. Nah. 
Hell no. They didn't, that's the only way John would announce it. So I she knew, had a shirt too. Yeah, it said what? there's a turkey in this oven. Oh, okay. I knew, but I didn't know if they knew I knew. Yeah. So I had to fake act surprised, and she was like, I know you already know. What are you doing? <laughs> so, <laughs> I, I oh, okay, back, back, back. When I first read it, I didn't really, I forgot to act fake surprise. <laughs> I was just like, congratulations and everything. Oh, so we doing I thought that? it was, doing, I thought it was just that. a normal Thanksgiving shirt. I didn't even read it. I thought it was just like a normal. So, oh, yeah, it took him like 45 minutes before he really found out what that okay, meant. Okay, so I, I played stupid. <laughs> I don't, I, if I know something, I'm, I act like I don't supposed to. John, we knew, brother. Congratulations on starting the family, brother. You know, it was also a cool thing. Not even cool, but it's just like. Oh, I got an announcement too. I hit on sneakers. For what? That's damn near the same thing as having a baby. On the cements? I'm just talking. Oh. You just you threw me off. I didn't hit anything. Oh. <laughs> I got the cements. What but time I didn't think was of we supposed to hit? be at your house for, for Friendsgiving? Five. What time did Kyra get the. 7.38. So <laughs> it, we got two people in the group. Kyra is going to get there early. Derek is going to get there early. No, Derek was, didn't get early this time. Well, oh, good. He was supposed to be there like 3.30. Y'all didn't get there until like 5. Yeah, I got there around 5. I think I still was the first one there, though. There you were. Kyra is so crazy with the I'll late sounds, bro. Man, Derek, man, we had a trip. I'm sorry, Mike. We had a trip. Tell Derek, man, get to my house at this time. <laughs> this man, hey, bro. We was all <laughs> taking an Uber together. He he woke me up out of my sleep. That's how early he got there, bro. <laughs> <laughs> he got. He woke me up out of my sleep. We had a like a seven a.m. flight. We were all gonna leave at like six. Derek got there at like five thirty. <laughs> me and Dana. Knocked, this one was going to New York because she was on the flight too. Knocked out. And this one, my phone. What the? You see, hey, y'all trying to get breakfast? <laughs> <laughs> Crazy. <laughs> you damn near would probably on that. Oh, he was like, hello. Yeah, I'm outside. He's saying it like it ain't nothing wrong. I'm like, what? Was no. this where y'all were both in the plex? Then you walk yeah. over? Yes. Well, I, you, I, under, I overestimated how long it would take me to walk. <laughs> that plex ain't that damn big. <laughs> yeah, he got, he got that. I was, I was like, I got to drag these two suitcase. Do you know how you look like? What, what happened yesterday? What you mean what happened yesterday? Like, I've seen in our group chat, D Mills was like, here. And then some stuff, some so, messages okay. had Derek happened came after to that. my house to get the rest of them leftovers. from. Oh, the but he also picked good. something up for Pierre. So I had brought a pie. Even though KB and Suzanne stressed that majority of the stuff they couldn't have anyway, so take it, I still left the pie. Something my man told me, oh, I should take the pie when Suzanne first said that, but I guess when I actually started making my plate, that's all I really cared about. And so I left the pie. So I told Derek, bring me a piece of it, because I'm assuming Derek was probably going to get a piece of it. <laughs> so like, <laughs> just bring me a piece of it, too. Well, he brought, he brought back the whole damn pie. So I'm yeah. like, oh, okay, cool, pie. But when he said here... I'm showering thinking he's saying it to KB. I take my shower into the phone. I mean, my phone into the shower. <laughs> I no, when I said here, too. I was at KB house. Okay. I got a little place in my, yeah. So as that's happening, I'll get back to shower. I'm playing my music. And then it dawned on me like, wait, because you called me. Yeah, I called you after I left his house. So you called me. I'd ignore it because my hands is wet and I put in shower. And then I start back showering. I'm doing my thing, listening to my music. I'm like, wait, did he call because he's outside? Because Derek is the type of guy that will sit outside for 20 minutes and and won't say nothing. He's just that nice of a guy where he's not finna. Some people, blow, I'm probably would call you five times. Derek won't. He'd be like, oh, he, he's in the shower. <laughs> so I'm like, oh, shit, hey, Demio, you're not outside my house right now because I, I was feeling bogus because I was definitely in there. Sometimes you take that shower, that water warm, good music going, you lose track of time. And Derek was like, nope, but I just pulled up. Yep. <laughs> so I was like, oh, man, let me run out real quick. <laughs> but no, I had a, I had an uh, incredible time. Food was amazing. Ooh, Shout out really to y'all for getting that cater. Shout out to you for putting everybody on. Because I definitely had no idea that they was that good. They oh, are yeah. way better than the Soul Vibes. R that oh, chicken, yeah, Soul Vibes, yeah. I've never had any chicken like that before. Oh, yeah, they chicken is very good. Very chicken seasoned. Was, very yeah. good. They delivered it, too. That was a big thing for me. Because that place is in the city. So I'm yeah. probably going to try to get a meal and have them bring south. it to me. It's outside. See, I was, who thank God. They I'm not going This is like near Bronzeville in the Ohio Park area. Okay. I guess it's not too bad. But yeah, she delivered it. And I, I think it was the owner. I can't say for sure, but I think it was the owner. I wonder if they had delivered me yeah, a little I'll plate. show you a picture. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you got a picture of the owner? I followed the account. Oh. <laughs> and I'm she's like, always on the account. So, mm -hmm. like, you always just see her face and her talking. So, like, really, really good food. You know, it's soul food vibes all, always kind of similar to each other. They were, they stood yep. out from Soleil. Yep. Let me see. Sure did. Oh. 
Oh, okay. But yeah, um Shout out to Miss Cleo, right? Uh what's her real name? I forgot. Oh, sorry. Maybe it's not a real name. Soleil, Cleo's, and Soul Vibes. I haven't had Jordan's. Um, but I have had Flaves too. I don't know if you want to put Flaves in that mix. I think Cleo's might be my number one, man. Soleil is really good too, but Soleil is really good. But I, they have they got the jerk chicken. Mm, I ain't yeah. just had just a fried chicken. Cleo's was you need to get some of that jerk and go, man. <laughs> I know that. Yeah. What about come and go? Oh, jerking. <laughs> what? <laughs> jerk and go like that? Jerk and go. How is that. they jerk? It was pretty good. Cause, oh. cause so they got that jerk that's really, really good. It's more so on the flavor side, but it ain't burning your Spicy. mouth. Yeah. Uh Soul Vibes got that jerk that's burning your mouth. <laughs> yes, they do. Soul Vibes jerk chicken is like too damn spicy. Yes. And I was just like, I got a I got a jerk Enjoy chicken. It. Yeah, I got a jerk chicken pasta from there once. And I was like, this should not even enjoy it. Yes, it's too damn spicy. I agree. And I have a high spice tolerance. Yeah. So like So imagine how I was. Yeah, you was probably going through it. And I still ate that motherfucker <laughs> though, but I was like really going through it. So jerk and go ain't like that? No. Nah. Oh, cool. And is it's it just jerk, far is as it hell. chicken wing? It is just far. Oh uh, yeah. 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 Either go to jerk and go or go to Ember and Irk. Ember and Oak Smokehouse opening in a few weeks. Hey. I ain't going to shit you recommend because you ain't eating it. That's my family restaurant. But you ain't eating it. No, I'm going to eat that. I'm just Did you taste the dressing? I did. You liked it? Hit, bro. Yeah, well. well it's, it's my it's my stepmom's recipe, but it has some alternative so I can eat it. Yeah. Mm. So. It was really good. I remember when she gave it to me, you was like, I'm not eating no more. Yeah. I didn't know if you ate it. Yeah, no. It was good. Um, I'm not a big dressing dairy, guy, but well, dairy, everybody Dairy free dressing? Good. That shit did not taste dairy free. Mm -hmm. Oh, for real? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was very good. But you know, it's just one, it's just from the whole milk or 2% to oat milk. It's the only difference. Everything else is the same. So yeah, Elena be doing a lot of that stuff. Cause like we we don't buy milk. So we'll have like um what's it called? Oat milk or we'll have just milk alternatives. Like we had canned milk before. And she'll use that and it's like you don't really be tasting the difference all the time. <laughs> Y'all are a very interesting couple. Do you know that? Why? I don't know. It's just because we don't buy milk. <laughs> <laughs> It, like we don't the, drink, ad, the ads to it at we least. Don't, we don't drink milk at all. The ads to it, no. But that's why your bones brittle. <laughs> <laughs> what was it? Canned milk. He got a baby picture of him in a in a wheelchair with a cast on because he don't <laughs> drink milk. I guess. <laughs> but why? why milk are we is so weird? essential. Well, wait, I said wait. interesting. I didn't say weird. Oh, I said interesting. Man. D Mills, were you the one that was talking about Unlocked on Netflix? Parents was. Yeah, oh, no, Parents was. It was you. Unlocked was which which show? Is it at the police? Oh it, yeah, yeah. You were talking about it. You yeah. seen it? Yeah, I watched it. Well, that thing is good. No, yeah, Unlocked. I is want to elaborate on why y'all. Would you not agree that they are an interesting couple? Though? They are, but I want to know if we have the same reasons why. I I can't put my finger on it. I uh, think that's part of the problem. It's not in a bad way though. I think, not even in a bad way. I think it's actually in the most greatest. I way. love y'all relationship. Me too. I I literally view you and I see you. And I cannot believe that you were able to find, like, Elena. Y'all click. Y'all are so alike in so many ways. It's funny. But it's like it's kind of like you and Angie. I she changed your life, brother. I can't. No. We're going to get to that. I cannot believe. <laughs> I cannot believe that you. I cannot believe that you. Because I, <laughs> I, I got to rephrase. I got to phrase this the right way. You my dog, and I love you. I cannot believe that Angie is your girlfriend. Fiance. Fiance. Why is that? Just 20 year old Derek, 16 year old Derek, even 24 year old Derek. Angie's out of your league and in those phases. Oh. Like when I think about the Pertillos wearing hoodie to the first, I don't think in the, my mind. The so wet boots that they not even boots no more. Yeah. Oh. That, that, no, that they weren't Derek, so wet boots. They were waterproof boots, but they <laughs> but got they water were soggy. <laughs> that Derek in my brain does not walk into Friendsgiving with a girl like Angie as his girl. Mm. So I'll be like, look at my boy, man. So you don't ever fuck that up. I'm going to put my foot it. off in your ass. Don't plan on it. Yeah, man. Have y'all thought about wedding stuff or is it way too early? We we talk about it brief. Like we usually talk about it briefly here and there. We are more so thinking about do we want it in the winter or the summer? Mm -hmm. I'm team summer. She's team winter. Right. So, but it would be 2025 or 2026. 
2026. Okay. We just haven't figured out. Yeah, because 2025 is right here. Boy, that yeah. <laughs> I was going to make my heart drop. When, yeah. I say, yeah, boy. We, when we was talking about it, she was like, I want to have it in January. I was like, ooh, I'm different. I want to. <laughs> I'm different. Yeah, I want to have that different. shit in the summer. Hey, please, if there's a video editor out there, please get that. Ooh, I'm different in a basketball montage of Derek's best moments played. <laughs> please, bro. <laughs> bro. That's they got fucking Jordy written all over it. Mm, I'm different. Look at these, bro. Bro, I, you was wearing them. Like, I might have to I drop to these work. on the time. Like, that shit look like when a bro. Beef you can't dipped. even like. <laughs> These for real look they like Jason Voorhees was wearing these boots before they he killed his, 17 people, bro. He his boots in, in the Aju, so. What were you saying, though, Derek? <laughs> yeah, I, I just think she wants to have it in the winter. And uh, me having it in the summer, I, I just have a different vibe. Like, I, I was like, I want to have a taco truck at my wedding for the mm -hmm. reception. <laughs> like how KB and them, they ordered a bunch of pizzas. And I was like, I, 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 I didn't even saying, know that happened. You saying, didn't know that happened? I, swear to I God. ain't saying you're wrong. I'm and I was saying, like, I like the way this going. And I was like, shit. I, when we turn at the reception, how the taco truck come through? We can all go outside and get tacos and shit. And like that, that was, and I feel like that's hard to do in the winter. I don't really want to go outside in the cold. Bro, I'm laughing at these boots, bro. I already Are know. you crazy, <laughs> bro? He said it looked like they dipped them in some Italian beef. <laughs> <laughs> I want to get married. And Bob have said a, he had a taco truck at his wedding. I have a party. Oh, oh that's might be the move, Derek. But yeah. you can't do that if it is in the winter time, is what you're saying. Yeah. Or it just makes it more difficult. Yeah. As long as you have an open bar, I don't give a fuck what you do. Yeah. That's true. Ready to get dressed. The open on. bar thing is pretty easy. It's usually twenty dollars. From what we're looking at, it's normally twenty dollars per person. Mm hmm For the uh how many people premium you, you think you'll do a big wedding, small yeah, how wedding? How many people you think would be there? It's gonna be like seventy five at the most. Mm -hmm. Oh, so how many people wedding? are at your I mean, where are yours? For reference. That's it for that. You Literally don't know. know. It could have been a thousand people that I couldn't tell you. <laughs> Definitely wasn't a thousand. <laughs> Definitely wasn't seventy-five. Yeah, you hundreds. were maybe two hundred. Hundred, maybe yeah. it was hundreds. Let me see. Because Dana came and saw a girl she knew there. <laughs> oh wow! So whenever shit like it's one thing to see your cousin or some shit, yeah. but neither y'all are directly related to anybody, and y'all had mutuals. And they, yeah, that is weird. Yeah. small world. I mean, it's not like we that far away from where we grew up, so I guess that makes sense. Yeah, true. Um, but I'm excited, man. I'm excited. Have y'all thought about, like, so one thing that happened in our wedding is because I wanted all of my guys to be a part of it. Yeah. She didn't mm -hmm. have that many friends, so mm -hmm. she had to ask, like, cousins and people that she, yeah. of course, love, but she wouldn't call her bridesmaid. Yeah. Have y'all thought about stuff like that? Yeah, I said I'm probably going to have all my friends be the groomsmen. So. Is that including Terrence? Yeah. <laughs> so I know you had a little beef with Terrence about four or five years ago. Yeah, so I was going to bring some shit up at Thanksgiving. What about Caleb? But I ain't want to do that. Caleb going to be there? He know he would if he can. I don't know. <laughs> you got to make a separate group chat because Caleb will hear, see that and pull up. <laughs> no, nah, shout out to Caleb. Who will be your best man? I probably won't have one. It's so hard, bro. I didn't have one. Yeah, I don't know who it will be. So, would you be mad if you had a wedding and I gave a speech? No. The mic is yours, brother. <laughs> did you do that? Oh, yeah, we did. His dad gave a speech. My dad, dad gave a speech. Yeah, yeah. That was a raw speech, too. He still very, talk about it to this day. Very heartwarming. You could tell I, he put, I ain't even right. Oh, it. yeah. Oh, he, no. remember he had that bar in there? Yeah, yeah that's how I know he lied. He had he that ain't bar. It. Okay, technically, you ain't write it, but you recited it to yourself in the shower <laughs> 20 times enough to remember it. Well, he, he said she went to sleep a blank and woke up a blank. Yeah. Crazy. Tonight. Yeah. Man, that was crazy. He's, I can so I uploaded that video of like the full thing mm -hmm. on YouTube. Only person that has that link is my dad, so I can see how many times he's watched. So if that we got forty six views, it's, it's him. all him. Let me see how many views. It Let me see how many views. That <laughs> how you know he ain't shared that link? It would be kind of weird for him to share the link. I mean, I guess it's possible, but who the hell would he share it with? I don't know. He's <laughs> some dude at work. He like, look at me, man. He even commented on it nine months ago. He commented on yeah. it. Yeah. What did he say? Just hearts, heart emojis. Uh, oh, he got his own. It's got 42 views right now. What's up, Mike? <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Pops, man. Ken, so I guess he's got man. an open day. I just saw it on Instagram. Oh, it's for real? December 7th. December 7th? December 7th. He's... You pulling up that day? I have to. Or you pulling up the, okay. 
Have to. That's a funny man right there, man. Y'all got waffle fries? I don't know what's on the menu other than some barbecue. I don't know what type of Dude, fries. You got to put, put your word in early so they have the little uh, dairy I'm not doing menu. nothing. <laughs> I might. I'm, I'm letting free, my dad I'll, do I'll, I'll pull up with you. Okay, word. I'll film it. Yeah, I'm letting my dad do his his thing, you know. Fuck it. We might as well go as a podcast. Why not, right? December 7th is what type of day? But I, It's a Saturday? He said, why not? Look at his face. <laughs> I'll, I'll get something to You can fly I'll get there. Something to, I'll get something to eat. I can fly I'll there. Eat you want to fly too? there? Two Saturdays from now? The only thing I say is, man. So if you're in the Gary, Indiana area, Freddie Gibbs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Only thing is, I'm only going to go that day. That's an yeah, hour bro, drive, that, bro. I'm never going to Gary, Indiana. <laughs> this, this would be my first time in my last. last time. I've only drove through Gary a few times. I've never stopped. Did we drive through Gary to go to uh, Indianapolis? Yeah. Probably. Oh, we missed, missed it? Oh. Yeah. No disrespect to anybody in Gary, Indiana. Yeah, There's sure. just nothing for me to be doing out there, y'all. There's no sports team. Anybody that's just going out to Gary, Indiana, Gary, Indiana, y'all should be getting on the ass because I've been seeing YouTube videos talking about how bad it is over there. Man, stop. Stop doing that. Let them people live. They don't want them cameras all in their blocks and shit. Hey, I, t- I tweeted like the thing. Somebody say you 18 minutes away. You pulling up? You know who else from Gary, Indiana? Who? Michael, Michael Jackson. Jackson. Yeah. Shout out to You can go look at his house. The GOAT. One and only. The GOAT for real, man. So let's yeah. talk about Drake. Because that's what you do on podcasts. That, that shit was crazy. Honestly, it was like, when I, got, when I saw the notification, I was like, he should have just left this shit alone. I didn't even understand what the hell. What's going on? Some give me he's, the, the one minute breakdown. He's suing you and can't do can't break it down in one minute. Yeah, uh, let's let Derek try. I want to see well, know, how tapped in Drake. Uh, Derek is. Well, I know he's suing Kendrick Lamar and UMG for apparently using bots to boost, not like us, which mm. essentially is a diss track tarnishing his name. And yeah, don't say nothing. Oh, no, 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 UMG, but I just know he's suing a, a record label for boosting that track with bots mm-hmm. and making the numbers they, look. Have they been able to prove that that's what happened? Apparently, what had happened was a lot of people got fired for UMG, and apparently they were saying stuff about trying to defend Drake, and those dudes got fired, and so I guess now Drake got in contact with them, and I guess maybe he has info from them. So there's a couple of things that we got to clear up first and foremost. First thing we have to do and we have to realize is that the internet is the internet. And I'm guilty of it too. Cause when I first saw the show, I'm like, Drake, what are you doing, brother? Like, I rock with both of y'all, but you disappointed me a lot. You disappointed me a lot. But then time comes out and people, you can read all of it because it's public record and nobody on Twitter read anything. They just took the headlines out of what was reported and they ran with it. And it looked like Drake was suing Kendrick Lamar. That's what it looked like. Like Derek just said, it looked like, oh man, you suing Kendrick Lamar because he dissed you. And we all was reacting. I didn't react crazy publicly, but we was texting about it. Um, but then what comes to find out, the bigger thing is this shit has very little to do with Drake trying to sue Kendrick Lamar. Number one, it's not even a suing yet. These, it's just petitions so far. He just dropped another petition while we were doing a podcast. Yeah. Uh, the first one was in New York. The second one is in Texas. But the main thing is UMG, which is Universal Music Group, and Spotify. And the problem is, is that, number one, as y'all know, Drake has been at odds with his label. I don't know if y'all realize that. That's why plot twists. The plot mm-hmm. twist shit, that's, that's him doing shit on his own and not in cahoots with the label. Um, because when you drop on a label, it, all, it automatically goes to Spotify, Apple Music. The plot to his shit, he was dropping directly on his website and on Instagram, Instagram. which it's going to piss your record label off. Because if you put your song, a new Drake song is going to get millions of views. If it's not on there, they, they just missed out on 50 million streams because you did you took a weekend to put it on there. Um, that's because they they had odds. But my my only gripe there with Drake is it shouldn't have taken Drake to re-up with them to realize that <laughs> he's not getting his value. Drake, you're the biggest artist in the world, so I'm on your side because I'm always artist over label, but you should never have re-up with them. That's why he said in the song, 400 mil these days, that's a low ball because... At this point, and 
I'm going to sound like crazy, but I really thought Drake, for the most part, was on his own label, you know, like, and had his own label. I didn't know he no, was Oh, yeah, he's like, with U- UMG, but, U- Universal. But that's to what your point, though, that's how big he is. I honestly thought, like, he could do that shit on his own. I don't think he really needs a label at this point. You know, you know and that's exactly. part of the reason why all his music got removed off TikTok, because yeah. UMG had that issue with TikTok, and all their artists' music eventually got removed off of it. But I think that even if he was on his own, be probably would have been some discrepancies there because the way that it's paying out, no matter who owns it, they're going to be like, hell no, nah, we need we need more of that, but for sure. But uh, first and foremost, damn near everybody is signed. Yeah. Okay? Like, Russ may be the only person, and I don't know what's Russ' deal now. He might have got is, uh, business. He got a distribution deal. So, so there's some way. Was that money back, yo? Somebody else of that category, like, they, they didn't sign. Oh, no, it was Dolph. Dolph didn't sign for a while, didn't he? No, he didn't. But, again, he didn't sign directly, but I don't know if he had a distribution deal, right. a managing deal. Like, Rock Nation manages artists, not yeah. necessarily signing them, but there's so many different things. If a, if a label is helping you, you you damn near signed. A lot of people put it in ways, but it's very hard to just say, me and Mike are running this ship, and we got no help from nobody. That's why the lines get blurred. But, and essentially, Drake is suing UMG and Universal. Because he found out that they basically licensed, not like us, at a lower percentage, 30% less. So what happens is you get a payout at the end of the month from a Spotify or Apple Music for the money that you that's yours. They was allowing Spotify to keep a lot more money so that Spotify can pump up the song. And he is feeling like they're doing that because he's at odds with them. Mm-hmm. And so his main attack is with UMG. I feel like it's a chess move because he doesn't want to be with them. But the internet is running with it like he's suing Kendrick Lamar. It's not even a, it's not even a, a, a lawsuit yet, but Kendrick Lamar will have to be involved at some point because UMG has saying, we ain't do nothing wrong. And any issue that you do have, you're going to have to take it over, Mr. Lamar. Because they're saying, we ain't paying for bots. If bots was paid for or used, Kendrick Lamar and them did that on their own. And that's why the label should get tricky because UMG, Kendrick Lamar is UMG because Mm -hmm. UMG owns Interscope. So it's like you have these three, like you have like four major labels, which is Sony, UMG, Warner Bros., uh, uh, EMI, and it's like they own some of the other labels that you might know. So like Def Jam is when Flex got signed, we had to make a UMG count, even though Flex is Def Jam, but it's all under, you know, like how Those House parent, of Highlights. Father company type shit. Right. We was with House of Highlights and Bleach Report under Warner Media. Yeah. yeah. Music business is the same way. Yeah. And it's just a lot of a lot of blurred shit going on, but that's pretty much it. And that's why I, this morning I was listening to to Ray Budden because it's like one thing with Drake is like it'd be such subliminal shit that it's immediately when you think you know who he's talking about, it'd be deeper. And I, I listen to that differently now, too, because a lot of the shit that you find out, oh, man, yeah, you talking about Kanye right here. But then you listen deeper and it's like, hmm, I don't think all of this is for who are we think it is. I think some of this shit might be about Lucy and Grange, which is the CEO of UMG. I, I don't know. But again... I just circle back to the fact that if if they're willing to give you four hundred million, Drake, you, you're probably worth quadruple that. You're probably worth quadruple that. That's the same shit my dad used to say. What? If so and so company is willing to give you this, then your value is so much more. It's stuff like that. When we were like very in the inception yeah. of taking deals and that's stuff the like argument that. I will have though. Like at, at the beginning of things, I get it. You know what I'm saying? At our beginning, yeah, you can have that, but it's so much work that you have to do. But Drake is like 20 years into the game. So he has the money, the notoriety. He knows the ins and outs. I, I don't get it. Some uh, Vince Staples, yeah, Vince Staples, go work with her. You, you don't have 15 years in the game. You're not a mega millionaire like Drake. So, yeah, Vince Staples can use the benefit of a label. And labels do shit that a person can't do on their own. But once you've already done it for 10 years like Drake, you really the value of them is not there. <laughs> I remember the young money days, man. Something you said reminded me of this line. And I was like, why do I know this? 
came in the game eight years prior, eight years later, your man's on fire. Y'all know who said that? The Book of Eli, to all my subscribers. What did I say that made you think of that? I don't know. Oh. Oh, you said uh, he uh, Drake's been in the game for 20 years or some shit like that. Uh -huh. That was 20, 2010. Pusha T, BET Cypher. Oh. I have not thought about that in a million years. I don't even remember. What was he doing? I don't, I don't, they was all in suits? Um, Is that the one with the good music? They all in suits? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Shout out to Pusha. It's so, it's, it, that, shit, that Drake shit is getting very deep. It's getting very deep. I wish I could attach on to it, bro. It's so hard for me to care. I feel that. Not just about. I'm not even just talking about Drake Kendrick because that's nah, so far. I, I feel you. Bro. I just mean in, like y'all talking music gossipers. the other day. I was like, I wish I oh, could participate. Well, I feel you, in but that. I'm just not into it enough to the do. Drake it. Kendrick shit is just so exhausting, bro. Because like, it's just no like. I was streaming the Kendrick album, and I like the Kendrick album. The only the only uh, criticism I had on it was I'm I, for myself. I'm curious to see the replay value, but that ain't nothing against the album. The album is still good, but like I was listening to it, enjoying it. We were streaming, having a good time, dancing to some of the songs, and you got Drake fans coming in there, mid bro. It's been out for 15 <laughs> yeah. minutes. The, the the shit the shit drop. I streamed immediately, so people coming in there saying mid. Oh, this is the Kendrick album mid. You didn't even listen to it. <laughs> this album is longer than what the time it's been out. It's impossible yeah. to have heard the album. I Bro, I felt that same way that, like, it's over type thing when uh, they were tweeting the numbers for Kendrick's album, and it was, like, X and so it was whatever about uh, whatever amount of numbers. And one of the top quotes was, like, Drake had this many streams and this many. I'm like, bro, just leave it, it alone. Yes, bro. None of that original yes. stuff had to go with Drake at all. Bro. Yeah, I think they were saying that Kendrick was on pace to do, like, 200 200 to 250k in the first week. Yeah. And people were saying Drake, well, did, Drake six, did yeah. 650 on a drop that he dropped in the middle of the night that no one knew about. I'm like, bro, who cares? And I was like, literally. Yeah. Who literally, cares? It just sucks. The, it sucks everything. What, about the, the, what about the art? Everything. Man. What bro. about the art? Because a lot of us, news flash to the super fans, a lot of us like both. Yeah. You, you're probably going to like somebody more. You probably like this song, this, this, this song more than this, this song. But a lot of us actually like both. But a lot of y'all are so fanned out on fucking Twitter that it's like, my goodness, bro. My goodness. Like the Drake lawsuit shit. It's going to be somebody that think I'm caping for Drake because I'm like, I can see, hey, man, I ain't with the labels. And I like even the fact that they say, hey, man, if you sue us, we just going to pull the Kendrick Lamar in it. It's like, y'all, labels just lame. But it's still going to be like, oh, man, look at this. I just, you can't listen to Kendrick. I can't stream him without the Drake fans coming in. When Drake drop an album, I do the same thing. It's going to be a bunch of Kendrick Lamar fans. It's just like, holy shit. They still playing with J. Cole name. Like, I don't even know how you can have any, like, why people still be talking that shit with J. Cole. I don't give a fuck what nobody say. I, I look at J. Cole differently than when that first happened. When it first happened, it's like, damn, you on some lame shit. Seeing how they beef played out, I, it's no way I'm following J. Cole no more. That's not the hell of putting the warm up on streaming platforms. Not, I, not I, that I, I needed that. it. Not that I needed it because it was already yeah. on my phone. Yeah, I, I, remember, I had to listen to it on Spotify. But it feel good. You not on Spotify, but on SoundCloud. J. Cole had dropped the, it just my delete later or whatever. And Demon's like, damn, I can't believe he took that song off there. <laughs> he's like, well, he did say he's probably going to delete it later. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they be, having, they be having my boy Cole fucked up. Cole just be in his own world. He do. He stay out of all the bullshit. What's He's, the name of that world? How you gonna head on the artist? <laughs> whole world. <laughs> how you gonna head on the artist? You might, you might see while you walking the beach. He just writing their songs on the beach. He might be riding, riding his, his bike, bike through, <laughs> through, riding his bike through <laughs> New York. You just hating on him. I just don't understand like the part of people's brain that be missing. He was willing to rap beef just to honestly when it was on some rap shit. The minute y'all got up with the pedophile woman, be a wife beater shit. I'm good. Mm -hmm. I'm not doing that. I have no interest in doing this shit that y'all do. I'm cool on that if that's what y'all are taking it. I'm good. I'm actually here to rap. I don't, I'm not doing that's that. That's the best part is that at first it did feel like, man, who's the number one rapper? Rapper. Who is the and best? And then it was everything else basically but that. Yes. And who's the worst human is what it turned into. <laughs> and that's why I tell people to me personally, just how I feel, it's the most overrated rap beef ever, man. We had the two best rappers in the game getting a ring. And instead of getting more euphoria, instead of getting more uh, Kendrick just open his mouth, it turned into some low blows. I'm a bad human, but what about this you did? Oh, 
Fuck, I forgot I did that. Uh, what about when you did this? Fuck, how did he know? Uh, Chubbs, help me make up some shit. <laughs> <laughs> I did one of them little kids might be day free. Like, that. <laughs> come on, man. I don't want to hear that shit. I want to hear more. Where's your uncle at? Because I want to talk to him. <laughs> <laughs> West Coast to do fans. Like, come get this ass whooping. I'm handing him out. You want to take up for for real? Well, come get his legacy out of my house. I want to hear more of uh, how the beginning of Euphoria happened. When when we played when we played Euphoria, this tells you everything. When we was at the Friendsgiving. Right at the one? Is that how it says? The superpowers get, get neutralized. neutralized. Yeah. That, I can barely remember. Ah, that, I remember. I'm forgetting. That's, that's the shit that I was liking. Yeah. Uh, how did how did the end of it go? Uh, with the she said about sexy red. Um, when you see you stand by sexy red, red I believe I you, you see two bad bitches. That's what I wanted to hear. I didn't want to hear you got a daughter and we we have no way to prove it. You just got to take our word. Oh, come on, man. <laughs> I don't want to hear uh, that kid might be day free. Trust me, guys. Trust me. Ah, come on. I want to hear y'all go at each other. Even I, I'd rather be braggadocious go at each other than. That ain't his baby. Like, come on, man. I ain't enough with the with, with all that. Tell me why you better than him. Tell me why he can't rock with you. Be creative. Kendrick, super creative on Euphoria. That was my favorite this song. Uh, that in 616. But, yeah, I just wanted more of that versus. Because once you say that ain't his baby or he got a secret daughter, that that that's going to take up everything. That grabs all of the attention. The pedophile, the uh, beat your wife. That. Just takes away everything, and I felt like uh, the start of it, the st when Euphoria push-ups, I was like, we finna go somewhere with this. It's something you ain't want to do. Ah. I like that line <laughs> he said. We don't want to hear you say no more. Even that, right? So now because Kendrick says that, he has some guys on his album that aren't black and be saying that in their music, and now with Twitter say, oh, no, Kendrick, you got to keep that same energy, which... They ain't lying, but at the same time, it's like I don't want to have to hear that every time something happened. We we doing this um this tit for tat thing of like, hey, come on, bro. I like that line before the sexy red one too, where he says, "I know you, I know they call you the kid, but where's the man? Because I ain't seen him yet." <laughs> I think that's Can a dope line too. Yeah, it's just uh it's just interesting. I do think that Drake shit is gonna be a lot bigger. We just gotta let time um time pass because going against a record label is kind of nuts. If you being honest, the money that they have, the information that they have, and the allegations that he has against them, like payola is illegal. You can't pay the radio to play your. You know how many people would be big rappers? You know how many multi millionaires that can't rap that would just be like, hey, play my song? You might be hearing uh, KSI <laughs> on the radio. Right, exactly. exactly. <laughs> hey, literally, though. Literally. Logan Paul would have five hit smash hits right now. They like, played it on my street. It wasn't bad. I'm not listening to it, but it wasn't as bad as people were talking yeah, about. No, it's not. Do it's think, catchy. Do y'all think people view us like that when they hear, like, yeah, it ain't that bad? Or do y'all think. For sure. Like, nobody's like, this shit re added to the playlist. Kendrick Lamar go off, the we go nah, off. Hell no, nah, not Kendrick Lamar go off. But sometimes I be feeling that way. And then I be feeling like how you said about KSI. Yeah. Like, it ain't. But then I just somebody, feel like when we in the booth, it's like novelty raps. It's fun. Yeah. He would be playing, some moments. He would be asking about our shit. Like, we really, I be telling him, like, bro, that shit cool and I appreciate it, but don't gas us up. <laughs> there definitely be people be talking about yeah, they be our gassing music this all the shit time. Up, bro. They be like, like uh, so and so song or this song is in my Spotify rap. I'm yes, like, Damn. yes, that be making that would me be like crazy. I'd be like, what? What the hell? Does that mean you really you actually you really listen, listen to this? I have a dude that sends me his Spotify raps all the time, and I think it well, has like different. Hotline that's in different. it. Now you had a few songs that were in mine last year. None of them are gonna be in this year because you haven't dropped music. I know, but yeah, people be sending me songs I made years ago. Like the Devin Book of I'm damn near about to take that off. That be hey, that be even getting uh that gets requested more do you think in my stream. That Devin Booker freestyle. That that's crazy. I hate that. <laughs> I don't even know why I made that. I was just like on some I want to make some music, but it's like yeah, I'm like y'all listen to that shit. I don't listen to that. I I'm not that's, listening that's to that. That's your wet dreams. No, nah, hell no. Nah. <laughs> I'm never gonna have a wet dreams. Cause I, I does J. Cole say that? I don't has he said he don't? I don't know. I don't like it as a fan. I just know that song sucks. Talking Let's... about some, you don't need my little man stand up. <laughs> 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 and he he loved that song. Cause that song was supposed to go on the first album. Oh, I remember no. watching his interviews when he was dropping Friday Night Lights. He was like, Man, I got this record, Wet Dreams. 
It's special. I ain't putting it on the first album, though. It'll come out later. It's special. It's it funny. finally came out, and I was like, okay, what this finna be? And it was that. And I was like, it did well. It did yeah, well. very well. What yeah. would you rather listen to, that or work out? Work out. Work out. Work out my shit. For real? Yeah. I'm not a big workout guy, but it's good. Years I like the Kanye one. Yeah, hell yeah. Workout oh, plan. Yeah, yeah. Oh, workout plan. Yeah. yeah. Hell yeah. yeah. We got to get in the booth, though, man. I'm from Mobile, Alabama. That's the best part where he get the call yeah. in. Yeah. <laughs> Shout out to Kanye. Yeah. But he's not even the same. Yeah. We got to get in the booth, though. I'm trying to speak. I'm trying to speak. Hey, that. you got to listen to that Llama, 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 huh? You got to listen to that Sfino, man. Yeah. I, I, it didn't register me that you didn't listen to him like that. But it made sense because I'm like, yeah, if KB listens to him, he'd probably be in his top five, right? Wouldn't you? Yeah. I, would, I would think so because he's not. The songs I have, have have heard, I've enjoyed. I just yeah. don't be listening like that. Even that freestyle he just dropped. That, that freestyle. Only reason I heard that freestyle because people was mentioning me thought, thinking he said Kenny Beach. He said Kenny Beats. Mm-hmm. Oh, I, did not get a, I did not get a Smino uh, name drop. <laughs> my stream was putting me on. Amine dropped the like, little EP or yes. whatever. He got Smino on yeah, one the of the uh, songs. Did you listen to it? Yeah. Yeah, Pass the Princess is decent. I like that. Let's get back in the booth. Yeah, let's, let's definitely get back in the booth. Because my outfit crispy, like, like McDonald's, McDonald's fries. fries. Oh, man. That shit was hard. Yeah. He should have kept that. Bring it back. Shout out to Nipsey. I got to make it better. Mm. Outfit crispy like what? How do you make that like line better? Chicken. Like Chick-fil-A waffle fries. No, it just, just got to flow better. Mm. You keep it so same line, just different flow a little bit? Yeah. Okay. Imagine okay. Like Derek change. rapping on a Smino type pocket. I don't know what Smino be sound like, so I don't know. He can't. I don't know. Put him on the Netflix and do say B. He can't do that. <laughs> What's Netflix? Now don't put him that? on nothing from Black Swan, please. Put him on uh put him on uh what's the freak song? Um Pro Freak. Pro Freak. Put him you on are Pro a big freak. freak rapper. Yeah. I don't know what they're talking about. I don't I mean I don't either. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she snapped. But go ahead. Big freak rapper. Hey, if you enjoyed this episode of Numbers on the Board, be sure to leave a like and subscribe. We will see y'all on Saturday. If you in the States, have a great Thanksgiving. Tell the people that you love that you love them. And we, and see we y'all eat soon. dressing. Not Happy stuff. holidays, y'all. Yeah, get some dressing, man. I think Anwar going to represent Drake in that lawsuit. <laughs>